Welcome back everybody, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This is episode two of this short campaign and it's called The Cave, following on from the first episode called Seer. Uh, I'm going for two word titles, one of the words being the, even kind of a theme going. If you remember from the very last episode, uh, our intrepid heroes, well these three guys, basically were called up to be uh, agents of the, of the Hammer and going out in the name of Sigmar to travel the old world looking for a, a mysterious seer called Armand de Gwyn. The Emperor, Cole Franz, because this is post-Civil War, as you would have read in like, the Enemy Within campaign, and the, the final one being Empire in Flames, of the original one anyway. I don't know how, where, it's going, where they're going with it now with the new edition. But basically, Cole Franz is now Emperor, uh, and he's worried. There's these rumours uh, of the um, world coming to an end, basically. It's, they've heard that this seer, Armand de Gwyn, is capable of seeing the future, and he may have walked the old world more than once. Ooh. So, if they can get hold of such a man, and speak to him and say, come on, old dude, what's happening? What's going to happen? What can we do to stop this? That's, I mean, that, that's an immeasurable amount of, of, uh, of power. Of course, it's assumed that the enemy also know about him, because quite a few people do know about him. So if these three dudes, soon to be four dudes, are looking for him, then chances are people of a lesser, so we say heroic um, uh, angle. Um, I can't what get are you words out. To say? I don't know, basically. Basically, people <laughs> who aren't you, and with more horns. We're and the spots. chosen ones, right here. Okay, you see, you see, you've used the word chosen one now in an epic fantasy campaign, and I've just pretty much switched off. So, um, <laughs> basically, they were sent out. Went to a little place called Le Mortino. Spoke to the locals there. We told them that Armand de Gwyn, yes. He does hang around a lot. He's got quite a few friends. He's also a massive tosser. Uh, he's actually responsible for, for murdering people because he obviously thinks that if he does certain things, he could change the future. Um, so they kind of understand how important he is, but they also freaking hate him. But they got a lead, which he's going to send them to the Grey Mountains because apparently Armand de Gwyn had meetings with several people about 20 odd years ago. Uh, Findon Vance, Inneand and the Elf, Browbook, who was the father of Browbook, whose father was also called Browbook. I ran out of creativity at that point. So basically it's telling you to go to the mountains, get there and you find this cave uh, who basically, where he basically um, had these meetings, secret meetings. Given him the route, they made the way there. Now they come to a deserted village in the middle of the forest. Um, it probably wasn't in the middle of the forest at some point, but the actual forest is actually reclaiming it. It's been abandoned for God knows how long. So the buildings have fallen down. It's very, very crumbly. Uh, you wouldn't have seen it if you blinked. Uh, it's really hidden heavily in the in the forest. He uh, spent the night in a barn and then something happened. A giant walked past. Oh, shock horror. Can't show you it, got no pictures. But it's actually, picture what didn't happen. But it was absolutely huge and it basically scared everyone, uh, especially the dog. Ow, uh, Lloyd, uh, Osgood sent his dog out and his dog ran off. And what was uh, Osgood's response to that? Pfft, I can get another one. That's not very good, <laughs> is it? But the dog runs off. Uh, no, the responsible pet ownership is not quite what it used to be. I was about to say, well, this, this is a uh, sort of a pre Renaissance <laughs> fantasy Europe, uh, so I'm pretty sure that dogs went high on the pizza list. Well, we're so we're like basically three, went running three or four off. days in and we hadn't eaten it. Uh, that's that a good point. Sad. Actually, done really, right? really well. Yeah. So uh, he went running off uh, and disappeared. Uh, in the meantime, you also see uh, the, um, the old sort of town hall with the upturned ship as the roof. And he went in there, um, and as you were leaving, you heard the voice. You cannot leave. Ah, uh, you see? Creepy ship. That's where we come back into the game. <laughs> it's, it's not, well, it's early morning. Uh, the sun is trying to break over the mountains, uh, but it's very, very difficult to get through the thick, smog-like uh, cloud. Uh, it's, it's almost as if the clouds are churning. It's, it's like the daytime is, is too afraid to come out. The sun is bursting through. You've got God rays coming down over the mountains, but it's really, really misty. Uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's not very bright. And you're inside this... Uh, this well, you're underneath an, up, an upturned longboat in, in high stone walls. It's overgrown, there's loads of rubbles in here and all sorts of stuff. And as soon as you hear that voice, you cannot leave. Um, the air just goes chilling. That was weird. <laughs> the air goes chilling. <laughs> uh, I mean, proper, you're breathing out, you can see your own breath coming out as condensation. Your hair stand up on, the, um, on, the, on your arms. It's just, uh, it's, well, it's, 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 it's terrifying. But this Did you say something else good? All around. You also heard as well, I forgot to mention, the sounds of celebration until you actually, uh, that stopped, and then you heard the voice. 
By the uh, door that you came in at, the big double door, there's like a shimmer, like a heat shimmer. And it takes on the form of a person. And that shimmer is slowly and slowly coming out almost like a, a glow-in-the-dark um, Funko Pop. Basically, it starts to slowly take form. It's glowing a strange sort of green and yellow. This is the figure of what looks like a, a town mayor. He's got the, the regal clothes on, the fur collar. He's got the big chain around his neck, big floppy hat. But you can see through his skin. You can see the skeleton inside his body. Every time he's moving, you can see muscles move in his hands and in his arms. He's got a sword in his hand, which looks very, very real. It doesn't glow. It looks like a proper sword in his hand as he steps forward. And at each door and at the window, you see another glow, another shimmer, and more of these ghostly figures start to appear. Each one armed, short sword, pitchfork, club, um, rolled up newspaper, basically all with a nail through it, of course, very dangerous. Paper cuts, man. So they all appear at the different doors and all the different windows. There's probably about a dozen of them. And as they appear, the air gets even colder. Yeah, um, they're so um, pale. They must be from up north. Um, 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 um it wasn't you then that, that said really something? Or, was good. It, um, it could be uh, these guys. Uh, yes. Uh, I quietly just kind of move and slightly stand behind the two um, burly warrior companions that I have. You uh, got burly warrior companions? <laughs> yes, the, the dog and yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the dog might be on their side, but we'll wait and see how it goes. And the dog heard what you said and basically summoned them. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, oh, I said the air's gone cold, everything's freezing. And slowly, you know the way uh, computer game characters sometimes walk on the road, and they don't, the, the foots don't sync up properly, they sort of slide, sort of moonwalk along. It's, they're sort of walking towards you slowly like that. Especially oh. the one at the back going, eh No, they're all sort of moving towards you slowly like that. It's, um, yeah. And the, the closer they get, the colder the air gets. Now, at the moment, it feels like you're standing in a, in a in like a fridge freezer, I mean, and it's getting cold. You can actually feel your fingers going numb. Um, Keep your distance, your wee ghosties. Yes. What is it that you want? Again, the mayor sort of is walking forward. His sword is up. You cannot leave. Why? You owe, you owe us. You are owed back. a soul. Reggie, here, boy. Yeah, we no, made no agreement. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? It was agreed that we would guard this path. Uh, what path? Who passes through. We're inside a building. Yeah, I think don't you know? That. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? You I'm, to... I'm caught yeah. out of the technicality. You're absolutely right. Off you go, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, were told... <laughs> we were told to guard this path. We were told to guard this path, and anybody who wishes to pass through, the toll is one soul. Which one of you will pay? Uh, this one. <laughs> what are you pointing at? Yeah, Christoph. Uh, Christoph's one. I'm kind of pointing at uh, Christoph. The, the, the ranger. Christoph told us. <laughs> I, I don't have a soul. You'll, you'll find. You take one of the others. I mean, they say a lot. Take the dog. Take the dog. <laughs> That's why I was saying Reggie here, boy. He's like, take the dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a soul, according to modern media. Uh, unfortunately, we need them. <laughs> We're on a quest, you see. An epic quest. We are the <laughs> chosen ones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have the ring to throw in the lava. I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> wrong epic quest. What, what, while you're at it, what's your favourite colour? Uh, he sort of moves forward. Is what quest is this? We seek Armand. Oh, I'll stop. Grin. This fortune teller. Yeah. They all stop at that point. Stop approaching. One, two, one or two of them even recoil slightly as you call out Armand Gwyn's name. You know this man. He is the one that made this agreement with us. He is the one that left us here to guard the path. We, you know we are heading to him in? to, um, yes, he summoned us. How can you prove this? How can you not? Do you want to go against what he would say? Mm. If you think yeah, eternal damnation yeah. is, is bad now, think about even more eternal damnation if you don't let us go. Make a fellowship test. Put it in, in words that kind of sound. Like, How okay. brave are you? Can I add my, my charm to that? Yes, you can, yes. 
Charming a ghost? I've never heard of Charming a ghost, yes. Well, charming. Yeah. If you want more confidence, I'll sell you an extra charm for five silver pieces. <laughs> I'm also going to use my luck. About... Yes, so that's to... actually. Let me just roll your luck for today. Yes. He's charming a ghost <laughs> and not a pottery wheel in sight. I know, I know. <laughs> Okay, that yeah, we're later. not going to roleplay that scene out. So go on. <laughs> 44. So, yes, I've made it. I have uh, 44 plus the 10 for the luck, 54. He slows down. Oh, the, it's not all the, other, all the other spirits, if that's what they are, turn to look at the mayor. He's, he's obviously pondering what you've just said. Interesting. It would be against the agreement to go against the word of Armand de Gwyn. Then he steps back, and he sort of steps back enough to allow passage so he can actually exit the building. You have chosen wisely. <laughs> and I'm stepping out through the door. Well, as you start heading towards the door, a shadow appears in the doorway. <laughs> Short, squat, sporting whatever weapon he's put down in his character sheet, you recognise him straight away. Norgond the Dwarf. Your You're bodyguard. late! Where the bloody hell have you been, Manling? I was searching all over Altdorf for you. You said you were going to the tavern. I went to the tavern. You weren't there. I went to the other tavern. I went to the... I was looking all over for you. Where have you been? I want all my back pay. What back pay? First off, is this your wife? No, uh, this is this is my body. <laughs> look, 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 there's, there's ghosts in here that we have to leave because we're going to see Armand. The Gwyn. Is move, move, move. Yeah. Yes, right. he's got your money. He owes me money and he's got your money. Quick, the let's go. The mayor is looking between Christoph and uh, and Norgon, looking a little bit confused. He's sort of looking around and he goes, are, are you leaving? We have haunting to do. Yes, we're leaving. I'll go grab Reggie and just sort of hold him out at arm's length just in case he did summon the ghost. Norgon, <laughs> move, move, move. We need to leave quick. Yes. You don't want to go in there. Yeah, I'm going to grip him by yeah. the lapels, drag him down to my level, and make sure he can't sort of run away as we move away from the line. I mean, if he's going to stop, if he's gonna stop us leaving, yeah. we're just going to push from the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you with me, with Van Roth? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I most definitely. Yeah. Stagger out the building. Either way, either, yeah, either way, even, we're both leaving, regardless of your Even in the cold kitchen. morning air, you actually feel a little bit warmer as you come staggering out of this building. In fact, you feel a lot warmer. Behind you, the ghosts move up to the windows and up to the door. Uh, they all stand there quite morosely because they're dead. And you sort of move move along and then slowly, it, one by one, they all wink out of existence and little wisps of smoke. And then you all, until you, the last thing you see is the mare and he sort of shrinks down to a small ball of light and disappears. A little trickle of smoke, green smoke, disappears into the air. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Yeah, There's yeah. almost something to worry about. Oh, my wound! Yes, you failed! You failed in your job as a bodyguard. You are terrible as a bodyguard. I was injured almost mortally last night. Mortally wounded, I was. Attacked in my bed. Where was my bodyguard? I don't know. Tavern Pretty somewhere, I'm sure. Pretty mortally sure he wasn't in your bed. <laughs> I just sort of pull him further down so he's no chin level. So you're then completely doubled over. My wound! You aren't going to get paid like this, small one. Where is my back pay? I don't know. You owe me a lot of money for a great <laughs> many services, including <laughs> all the things that happened in those weird clubs that you like to go to. I despiled my skull cap. Not this one, obviously. That one had to be you know, sanctified in the churches and then burned. Well, I, I needed to, I needed to go, and that was convenient. The alcohol was mm, the elven wine, elven wine. Oh, it's magnificent! And I just felt the need to relieve myself, and it was there. So I, it wasn't just that. I man. sipped out the one eyed snake, and I pissed in it. And you lost you pissed your in the one eyed snake. <laughs> the poor yes. animal. I'll, I'll <laughs> this sounds like a fantastic place to be. I don't know who you two are, who you fools are, but I was employed by this creature's father to guard him. But ah, yes! Yes, yes, you were employed by my father! 
Yes, and after the many, 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 many scandals and incidents, including what you did to that poor, poor piece of livestock back in the city, which we will not go into yet again. I'm the sorry, I pissed on that as well. Yeah, hey, he was just joining the local conservators club. Let's not get started, Mumbling. There's a lot to get through. We've not got enough time. The important we thing definitely is... definitely haven't got enough time. We need to go. Yeah, we're already gone. You we, we are, we are, we are on a bit. quest from the Emperor himself. Yeah, I'm going to get a move on. This sexual tension is driving me, is like driving me nuts. Why do I care about your Emperor? Just because he's wearing like Sigma Sacred Jockstrap or something, am I supposed to care? I'm old back then. And I'll switch the hand from the collar to the cuffs. <laughs> and basically, I get my back pay. Or I rip off your man purse and crush your family jewels. Your father transferred your contract so that you have to pay me. Because quite frankly, after the last few scandals, he's paid enough. And I'll just... Fine, 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 fine. I will pay you now. Let go of me, Riff Raff. Let go and I will pay you. Crunch. Right. <laughs> That's better. Right. Now, of course, I can't pay you until I get paid myself. So okay. you can either come along Verbal and agreement. join us in our glorious quest for the Emperor, and then you get paid at the end of it, handsomely, most definitely rewarded so handsomely well that you will even find a bearded dwarven woman for yourself. I've got to I say, mean, actually, that's a new record for me. We're 20 minutes in, I and the sun has been up on the balls. <laughs> so, right, I'm, I'm, I'm... As I said, the sexual tension is out of control. <laughs> can we please get on to the adventure? <laughs> just just watch Reggie. He, he's, he's small enough. He might want to ride him. Are you coming? <laughs> Who are you talking to then? Because that was a bit weird. <laughs> Norgon! <laughs> Norgon, are you coming? Do you want your back pay? I'll come along and I'd better get paid. Oh, well, you're guaranteed to get paid at the end of it. Handsomely. Just have to, yeah. just, you may from have to walk on, a bit faster with your little legs. From now on, from every time I have to save your life, I expect to be paid double. Double? Oh, Jesus. I don't think anyone's got that amount of money. Uh, <laughs> no one has, but still, his father insists. And of course, if you let me die, my father will have you hunted down. He'll have your beard shaved from you and cast somewhere with the elves to laugh at you in, in happy mockery. Yeah, Let's go. Magically yeah. appeared in both hands. You mentioning the word of the beard again. What? Sorry, the what? The war of the beard. We actually hunted down and killed all the elves because of that. So don't, 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 please don't say kill the elves, all right? Because <laughs> we're going to set strain off, and it's a completely different game. <laughs> it, uh, yes, let's go. We need to get to the Grey Mountains. You are hopefully, going, hopefully you can climb. This, this discussion, as you're uh, making your way over the bridge, over the One river. One can only hope. Yeah, <laughs> and then through the forest. The mountains are in the distance. Now that you're moving away from the village, the haunted village, of course things are a little bit um, warmer. Thank, thank the Lord, thank the gods. You can also see where the giant walked through. Obviously, it was a big one, uh, hence the word giant. And you see some uh, trees have been moved out of the way, some smashed down completely. The big ones have just been moved because I mean giants are big, but they're not that big. And you see the footprints as well, following what looks like a rough path. Now, by the looks of it, there was a, a road here of some sorts, probably a woodsman's path, maybe even a hunter's tra uh, track. It's all very, very overgrown, and unless uh, you keep your eyes on it, um, then you, you end up getting lost in the forest. Has anybody got any kind of woodsman skill or any kind of tracking, anything like that? Anyone at all? We, we have Stride of the Ranger here, don't we? Yes, he's just behind shouting out instructions. No, I don't have any no. skill. In that case, then, I'll, I will ask each of you to make an intelligence roll, please. A D100 will equal to or less than your intelligence roll. And don't fuck it up. No. Seventy-one. No. Nope. No. No. Eighty-seven. Everyone rolled high, yeah. Ninety-eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the forest is nice. Uh, as you're making your way along the path, um, slowly but surely, you kind of realise after well, a long while that the mountains don't seem to be getting any closer. And when you're looking down, you're literally just walking through undergrowth. Uh, the pathway through here is absolutely an absolute nightmare. 
the only thing that makes any sense is where the giant's footprints have come from. So by the looks of it, when you come across a footprint, it looks like it's come from the mountains. Um, to be fair, once you walk into the thick forest and you don't get, you can't see the mountains as, as like what, like a um, what do you call it, like a uh, uh, something to guide you, uh, yeah. then like a landmark, then you're yeah. going to get hopelessly lost in this forest. And you say the footprints of the giant, they head towards the mountains? Yeah, but it looks a bit, yeah, well, the giant was walking away from the mountains um, from when, when you first saw them. So, I mean, logic it takes if you followed the foot, giant's footprints, can, um, yeah. it's going to should lead you to the mountains. Now, you can do right. that, and that will get you to the mountains. Um, <clears throat> of course, what you might run across in that time is, is, is dicey. Yeah. Or you can all try again to make an intelligence roll, uh, and, but if you all fail again, uh, you're not making it to the mountains tonight, and you're going to be in, in the deep forest yeah. in the dark. Yeah. Lovely. Exactly. Let's make another exactly. roll. Yeah, I've got a bit of a sixth sense when it comes to being followed or ambushed. Yeah. So. Oh, I rolled a ten. <laughs> yes, oh, we got. A, we have a winner. We have a success. So you went for the intelligence I got roll. Four yeah? percent. Yep. <laughs> Good last number ten. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, after realising that following the giant's footsteps is probably isn't probably the best idea, then suddenly you have a flash of inspiration, and yes, it's this way, and you follow again a game trap. And after a little while, the the tree starts to thin, the ground starts to rise. The ground starts to get a lot rockier and a little bit more open. And when you come out the other side, air in front of you, powering into the heavens to touch the face of Sigmar himself, is the Grey Mountains. It's late after, uh, well, say mid afternoon now. Uh, you've, you've stopped a couple of times for something to eat. There's lovely fresh running rivers here, so there's no problem with water. The mountains themselves are white, grey, and black, and but with, the, with a very bright white top. Uh, the clouds blowing across, whipping the, the snow off the top of the mountains. It's, it's quite picturesque. Um, if it wasn't so freaking cold, but it's uh, but yeah, you're here. You made it. You to the grey. You, you made it to the grey mountains. Now, all you've got to find is the cave. That's where the dwarf comes in. Yeah. So Norgon, do you uh, you've sort of come walking out. You sort of have a look at the mountains, and straight away your dwarf senses say this would be a good place to set up a mine or two. There's lots of quarry land here. Some good slate work there. Some good stone there. That, that's all pretty good. I'm also going to ask you to make a intelligence test. Do you have any kind of dwarven? Law, knowledge, mining, smithing, anything like that? Uh, I have trader, smith, and I've got dwarf craft, so that's a 38%. Brilliant. Okay, in that case then, uh, what's your intelligence, sorry? Uh, 28. 28. Well, you, in this, I'm adding plus 20 if you've got the skill. So it's 48% for you. So 48% or less. Why well, don't my dice hate me? What did you roll? Uh, 86. So when he said, why did my dice hate me? I thought he'd roll the dice and it came fuck off. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, no, you're sort of looking at it. Yeah, you can tell that this mountain, is. this is the sort of place where, you know, where a dwarf stronghold could be built. It's absolutely perfect, as a matter of fact. Lovely yeah. flat cliff face there. We could put a door in. Defensible uh, raids and crags. No, it's uh, it's wonderful. But that, that's, all, that, but that, no, that's all you can tell. If it's actually been done or not here, you have no idea. Uh, I do actually, because uh, my character comes from the Grey Mountains, Karak Nine, which is here somewhere. Right. Uh, in that case, then, uh, what did you roll then when you rolled uh, against forty-eight earlier? Eighty-six. Okay, no, it didn't make any difference. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely place. <laughs> yeah, you're from here, but <laughs> reminds me of home for some reason. <laughs> it's a different mountain side entirely. It's, it's, it's a completely different neighbourhood. This is where all yeah. the bad kids hang out. <laughs> yeah, you never came down this. So they didn't have a spa. So no, it's. Um, I mean, it's. Like I say, it's picturesque. It's, it's perfect dwarf country. If, if there's going to be a cave around here, then uh, yeah, this is the place to find it. But I mean, it's finding it's it, the problem. I guess it's going to be hard to find a cave in the middle of a field. Yeah, mm. but I, I figure it's going to be quite <laughs> low in the mountains as well, right? Because uh, me these guys, all. these guys went met there quite regularly, so it's yeah. not like they're going to climb an entire mountain every time. Well, there is a pass in front of you. Uh, well, it's not so much a pass, it's just like a very shallow valley leading into the mountains. So you've got a choice. You can head down this little valley pass sort of thing. It's going to have sheer cliff face either side as you, as you go down. It's going to be more like a canyon than anything else. Uh, or you can head around the bases of the mountain left or right, north or south. So, my, my erstwhile uh, wilderness friends, where are we going now? Down the canyon? Or down the canyon? That way. Yeah, we'll go with the dwarf. 
What are you leading them, Dwarf? <laughs> um, I'm going to lead them down the canyon. Down the canyon? Okay. Yeah. Looks like you a perfect spot for an ambush. Yeah, uh... that's about... Oh, no, don't say that. You're giving me ideas. Let me just make a note. My spot oh. thinks it's tingling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get my crossbow ready anyway. Yep. Okay. The important thing you have to remember, manlings, is this is green skin country and human yeah. country. Yeah. The grey skin country. So but you head towards... country. <laughs> we you head towards... Uh, not down here. You head towards the canyon. Uh, it's steep either side, like I say. Some of it's sheer, but there's certain areas it's kind of like... Sli- like a Doctor Who quarry, basically. So it's kind of like slate going up at slants, which means you can get up to the sides if you have to. Uh, there's constant noise down here. You've got the wind rushing down the canyon. You can hear this, the calls of crows and the honks of seagulls who are a bit lost. And it's um, it's just really noisy. Um, the main, when you were coming in the forest, it was lovely and bright. When you started to come to the mountains, it was lovely and open. And you hear the, the wind howling at the, at the mountain tops. But in this canyon, it's literally like walking down a wind tunnel. And you can hear it roaring in your ears. You're blowing your, your clothes behind you. Anybody wearing a cape, it looks like you're actually falling in midair. It's just... It's just really, really noisy as you're heading down here. And in fact, as you start going down, you start coming across the corpses and the bleached bones of... Oh, actually, no, not bleached at all, actually. It's the wind coming down here is so cold, they're actually quite well preserved. But there's orcs down here, very, very dead orcs. Um, crossbow bolts that are in them are, are dwarvish design. So, yeah, obviously there's been a few fights down here. Um, you can't quite tell how long they've been lying there. Like I said, they're quite well preserved in the cold, biting wind. It's um, yeah, it's and and the and the, the, uh, the canyon itself is getting a little bit wider as you, as you're heading down. I, I need another roll from you, please, dwarf. Um, you've got your forty-eight percent, but because you're from here around here as well, I'll give you an extra ten percent. Fair enough. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> ten. Ten. Brilliant. Uh, as you're walking along, you sort of looking over, and then you see to the left a wall. It's like a kink in the wall, very very slightly. But it doesn't look natural. Looking at the ground, looking at the kink in the wall, it doesn't look natural. And that's a dwarven trick. They'll actually build, they'll actually chill into the wall, but sort of put a lip behind it. So if you're looking straight at it, because it it's very, very slaty, very striated, so it all forms into one. But if you go flat against the wall, there could be like a, an entrance there. Do you wish to investigate? Yes, I wish to investigate. You decide to investigate. You move forward, you get up to the wall itself, and indeed there is uh, the way it's been it's way it's been chiselled and fashioned. It's probably about uh, six foot wide, but it is a huge. It looks like a slash down the side of the cliff face, allowing entrance into a dark, musty cave. Right, so, <clears throat> you said you lot were looking for a cave. You're looking for a weirdo in a cave. Yes, yes, Are you yes, that yes, weirdo. Yes. I don't know. I mean, all you mystic humans all look the same and same the same. You're all a bit tapped in the head. Is anyway, it? I found a cave for you. Do you have any torches or a lamp? Or any way to see in the dark? Well, 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 I, I am... Uh, well, oh, I'm, sure my, I'm sure my companions, my wilderness experts here, the guides, have torches to guide us so I'll, I'll just look at the stalwart companions <laughs> well <laughs> i got a tender box we can just make something yeah same here. well if this is a dwarven make uh norgon just inside the doorway there should be a barrel of torches um that should also be an urn uh with oil in it um i mean if it's been here for so long it's probably all dried out uh, by now if oil dries i have no idea i'm not a chemist so if um if that's, if that's the right thing but looking inside uh then yeah there is a barrel you see the torch handles sticking out of it right i'll grab a couple of them hand them out and it's like yeah, you lot would be lost without somebody who knows what they're doing i mean yeah. we're still lost aren't we? it's a nice day no, for I, I think it's fortunate that you uh, happened along when you did uh, nothing Master fortunate Dwarf. about it some weirdo in a dress draped in candles sent me this way and tried to press some sort of badge upon me. Like, I have any idea what any of that means. Why do I have to swear anything to Sigmar or Carl, or Carl what's his face? Why has he got a chicken on his helmet? You tell me that. You tell me that that's the same thing for an army commander to have. Or an emperor. I was going to say, you can say that to his face, but I don't think he'd bend down for you. 
So, <laughs> yeah. if only it stood a little higher from the ground. Yeah, I mean, it's either so... that or living in a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> let's have a look here. The cave. The cave is quite wide. As you go in, yes, there is indeed an urn of oil. Uh, which you can dip the torches in, and you've got your flint and tinder to get those burning. They should last for quite a while. Cave is quite wide. Um, all gone looking at it, it's, it's also fashioned. It looks natural, but you can see the, the chisel marks and the work marks of dwarven tools. They've obviously been working to get this cave. It's probably a natural cave, probably very small to begin with, enough to fit a dwarf. But then they've chiseled it out, they made it a little bit larger, and they kept it hidden for a reason. And there's loads of places like this that the dwarves use as sort of caches and storage, and or for, or for whatever reason, or just a place to hide uh, when they're doing their when they're traversing the mountains. But this one looks incomplete. Um, usually, when they do the carving, they make it look like stone walls and flagstone floors. They'll carve it all in to make it look like it's been built, so they've been carved out the natural rock. But this looks incomplete. In front of you, though, is a long corridor, this large domed area, probably about 20 feet across. There's a few things in here, a bench, smashed up bench. In the middle, there's a, there's a fire pit. It doesn't belong there. Dwarves don't do those sort of things. It looks like it's not been used in a very, very long time. Um, and yeah, and then you see the um, there's a tunnel which sort of goes forward um, a few feet, and then it starts to slope downwards into the darkness under the mountain. Are we likely to encounter any of your kind down here? No I mean, we usually keep it a bit cleaner. Yeah, not only that, there'd be there'd be guards in this room as well, uh, challenging you, challenging you if th this place uh, was, was occupied. So there must be that... smell in the air. The smell tells you that it's not been, uh, it's, it's it's not been uh, nobody's been here for a while. So Armin Digwin has been one. holding meetings with people in old abandoned dwarven caverns. Then that's quite normal well you know these these you know strange culty sort of people yes they, they do that i'm sure well you've got the tunnel in front of you what do you want to do let's go investigate shall we who we wants to go first back now oh yeah but no no the dwarf well, and bodyguard here yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the person who would be used to the architects would probably be the best person to send first. I, I agree wholeheartedly, yes. Definitely the one to go. The man for the job. Yeah. What does it, it, what's a dwarvish trap look like? Who second? Anything. I'll, 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 I'll follow him. Okay. I'll, 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 go, I'll go next. I'm going to go next. I mean, I'll go next. We could both go second. Well, I, say, yeah, I don't I want mean, to make a fight out of it. No, Amadeus is... Uh, okay. <laughs> He's not the, the swiftest guy in, in movement. <laughs> He's got a dwarf lead in the party. I mean, how slow can he be? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> you start heading down the corridor, and this is where you, Mr. Players, and possibly you as well, watching at home, get out your graph paper, because we're going to do some old-fashioned mapping. I shall call out these squares. You need, like, an old math, math paper or graph paper. Um, I will call out how many squares you're traversing and how many squares things are wide and how long they are. And then you can write this down and hopefully you'll get the map right and be able to find your way out again. Not saying that this is a maze of any kind. So, here we go. You start heading down this corridor and you walk for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight squares. Eight math how wide, squares. How wide is it? Uh, each square is. I never actually. Well, but how, well, how many ten, squares ten feet, wide would the by ten corridor feet. be as well? Is it one block wide? Yeah, each, each square is 10 feet by 10 feet, and the corridor is one square wide. Right. Hmm. 10 feet wide, sorry, I, I should have completed that sentence. As you head down the corridor, it's getting cold. You, you, you are going underground at the end of the day. I don't know if anybody's been down a coal mine and how cold it is down in, in yeah. a cave underground. It's just bloody awful. Mm. Um, so you're actually feeling that cold as you're sort of heading down. It's, it's, it's colder than it is outside. You're not in a, not in a raging wind. As you head down, uh, it starts to flatten out a little bit more. And then, um, Norgon, you notice that the craftsmanship is a little bit better here now. Obviously, the last thing that they were going to do was probably the entrance, but they obviously didn't bother finishing it for whatever reason. Down here, it's starting to feel a little bit more in order. So you've got the carved flagstones and intermingled with some actual flagstones. 
um, and then the walls have been carved, the the art, the, the ceiling's been carved, so it looks like it's vaulted. I mean, this is really, it's going back a long time ago, you're easily talking maybe four to five hundred years. So it's, uh, this is this is ancient dwarven work, back, back when the masters were at their best, uh, basically, uh, before the green skin started to take the uh, take umbrage. It's incredibly, incredibly detailed. It's actually quite beautiful, to you anyway, uh, the, everybody walking behind you. Yeah, it is gorgeous. There's certain areas where they've carved pillars out of the rock, which you can put your hands behind, but you can see it's almost like a stalag stalag type meeting a stalagmite, but they've carved it into into what look like pillars with all the the markings down the side and dwarven runes and faces in the in the wall and pictures of the Grudge Father. It's just um, yeah, it's it's actually it's stunning. This is a this is a, yeah, this, is a this is a dwarven. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that they would put in a tomb to honour uh, their ancestors. Uh, but this, this at the moment this doesn't feel like a tomb. It just feels like a, an entrance way to a really fancy restaurant. So what? you get down Why would to the they end. Have of abandoned this... this place. What? Mm, indeed. So spooky. So you get down to the end of the corridor, and it comes to a T junction, as all good dungeons do. So you can go left or right. Basically, the dimensions stay the same. As you come to the end of the corridor, that there, there is what would have been iron wrought doors here, but they've either rotted or come off the frames. They're lying smashed on the floor, uh, smashed inwards, I should say. Actually, obviously somebody's had a bit of a go at one of them. You see the the um, the centre, the the iron uh, bars of the door have all been bent out of shape. And the doors all lying smashed on the floor. The corridors on the inside of here, again, they're carved, but not as ornate as the, as the corridor you just came out of. These corridors feel very functionary. Uh, it's just flagstones, nicely carved walls, and then there's a normal ceiling. Down to the right, uh, you see that it's, uh, there are actually some wooden support beams holding the ceiling. Obviously, there's a little bit of work going on there. There's a few bit, there's a little bit of rubble on the floor. It doesn't look great, uh, but to the left, it looks absolutely fine. Left, like, then, yes. Why left? I... Well, if you always go left, you're never going to get lost. And right looks a little bit rubbly. Yeah. I'm well, we go don't want to go down. right because it's rubbly. We go left so we don't get lost. Obvious, really. <laughs> Would you I'm agree, gonna... Norgod? I'm going to head to the right. <laughs> I have been <laughs> in the cities with you many times when you've been drunk trying to navigate your way home. Man. And I always, always made it to a bed. I mean, <laughs> yeah, not necessarily the right bed, I'm guessing. That doesn't really matter. There's, there's a lot missing the ladies, in that statement. If, if the lady is there, the lady is happy. And the lady is always happy. I mean, the uh, so thing is, they know him by name. They know me do... by stature. <laughs> yeah, and no be my by my, my street name of police <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and grab a piece of rubble. Yeah. Barney and rubble. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go um and draw a, a chevron pointing back the way we came. Yeah. Onto the wall. On the floor, on the wall, on, on the, the ceiling. Wall. <laughs> on the wall. Okay. All you can be the ceiling, it's a dwarf stronghold. So yeah. on the wall, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Scratch that into the wall over the wonderfully perfectly preserved dwarven carvings. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I kind of look at a little apologetic. Yeah, who needs ancient history anyway? <laughs> no, God, I said to it. The floor was the place to make that mark, Manling. <laughs> the floor. Wait until the next. Wait until the next corner. I, I, I could put. I could put a puddle on the floor for us to to, to see. Oh, yeah. well, if I there write on the floor, there's quite, quite, quite a large number of piss jokes at the moment. I'm getting a little bit concerned about your character. <laughs> uh, they're not jokes. Wait, you're only oh, starting sorry. to get colour. We're like three hours in. Are you only starting to get concerned? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You're playing Warhammer. It's not a therapy session. So you move. Well, where would you go? Do you want to go left or right? I thought we were going uh, right. Well, I going think. Right. Yeah, Norgon, Norgon wants to go right. And right, um, yeah. And yeah. Christoph wants to go left. Um, Up to you. You can split the party if you want to. We're going right. Well, you know where you're going, obviously. No. If we get lost, though, we know it's the dwarf's fault. <laughs> okay. I mean, getting lost in a dwarven crypt. A dwarf getting lost in a dwarven crypt, that just wouldn't be wouldn't be heard of, would it? Terrible. The reputation would go so far down. <laughs> dwarf. So you turn right, yeah. and you start heading towards where the shored-up ceiling is. I am gonna. Who's going? For, so the first two people is what Norgon and Osgood. Yep. Gonna, has anybody got dodge blow? Yes. 
I do. Yes, yes I, I do. Need you, I need you both to make an initiative roll. Uh, you've got dodge below there, Norgon, so you get an extra plus 22 initiative roll. Oh, cheers. That's my pleasure, man. I'm starting to worry that I'm the only one that used first edition rules and has absolutely no abilities and no <laughs> no decent <laughs> rules at all. <laughs> I what failed is on my dodge blow. Failed? Oh. I passed. You passed? What's your toughness there, um, Osgood? Uh, three. Three. Good one. The, um, as you're walking along, you can actually feel the flagstones. There are some normal flagstones, like I said before, here, and they're sort of tilting slightly under under your under your feet. You can actually almost it's almost as if the the corridor's reacting to your presence. There's this strange, deep rumbling sound. You can actually feel it in the deep of your chest. And from the ceiling, there's a crack, and large chunks sort of of fist and head-sized rocks start falling onto the ground. One does hit you, uh, but yeah. I only rolled two damage, so it, it, it's going to leave a bruise. But he bounces off his shoulder oh, off if he wearing pulled runs and smashes onto the ground. Uh, of course, uh, Norgon, you hear the crack. You look up, you see the rocks falling down. You take a step back, and they uh, they fall all around you because you're a small target. So it's, it's fun, um, Norgon. Yeah. Sure, this is the right way, Master Dwarf. <laughs> Do you want to continue down this route? Yeah, I'm going to just leave a bit more of a gap between me and him on the way forward from now on. <laughs> no, you want to get right next to him because none of them are hitting him. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure it's the right way, but uh, well, most of the traps seem to have been set off in this direction, and there's probably some dead greenskins down here, so um, uh, it's probably the right I way. I mean, we just set that one off. Well, no, you set that one off. Well, it wasn't so much a trap, it's just lots and lots of very, very loose rock. Like I said, the shoring uh, of this part has been put up uh, because it's just, it's everything's it's already cracked. In. Yeah, it's about just, just walking <laughs> past it has set, set off a, not an earth tremor. But um, but yeah, there is no disturbance to make a few rocks fall from the ceiling. Just walk properly and try to you know keep your head down a little. I mean, I kind of have to because this is both the midget. <laughs> you think something I... about my height, there, human? Yeah, be careful I mean... there. He's got a bit of a short temper. <laughs> <laughs> is the GM and the couch striking with a hammer? But you're <laughs> within range. That's how I, I mean. I wouldn't it. recommend it. Yeah. Do you want to do? I mean, how, how you feel about your height is your own business. Uh, let's carry on. Yeah, you want to carry on down this corridor? I, I, yeah. I, I'm not so sure that that's a good idea. I mean, we could. I did uh, say I, left all along, didn't I? I? No, you didn't. You said right. There's no, no. I said left. Uh, left. I, I'll believe what I see from writing. There would be no uh, shame in changing your mind, uh, Norgon, <laughs> at this juncture. <laughs> that that would mean I was right and he was wrong, though. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Oh, God, we're going to yeah. be here forever. Yeah. Christoph. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't speak again <laughs> until we're out of this game. <laughs> um, I'll, throw, I'll, throw, I'll throw a Reggie at him. Uh, looking look, at the ceiling, I... Norgond, it, it, it is really, really rough, and it, it goes for quite a few feet. You can continue down there if you want to, but you will be running the risk of another, another rock fall. It's not a trap. It's just really... It's just old and it's falling yeah. to pieces. Oh, yeah. I'm uh... going to keep falling over. I'm fine. <laughs> I'll bow to the wine, get my in and winch into the humans, and I'll return. Okay. I mean, keep going. We'll meet on the other side, I'm sure. The other side must be brown, right? Yes. Right, so okay, I'll say so... we turn back, and that'll be oh, my yes. for that decision. So we're going this way, are we? Excellent. Yes. See, so you it the right way. No, no, because now you want to go left, which takes you back to the exit tunnel. No, no, I want yeah. to go straight on. Yes. <laughs> you head down the, you mean right. You head want head to go right or left? I'm lost already. We went right, so if we go in the opposite oh, way, the then it's left instead of right. So, so we're going to go backwards then, are we? I'm just going to go, when we get to like the T-junction, I'm just going to keep walking straight across. And the little asshole goes so What would have been like? You, you, <laughs> go ahead, yeah. that's it. Yes, yeah. excellent. excellent. And I'll, I'll, I'll draw the chevron again. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Scratch out the old one. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, I, I think we're going to be here forever, and we're actually going to reduce the size of this place. <laughs> there we we're going to get this at every uh, junction, two by the way. Rooms. There we go. So you head down the opposite direction, which is to the left, not back to the entrance, but down the other corridor, which you didn't try before. You walk along six boxes, that's for the map makers out there, and then you can turn right. Uh, the corridor then starts to turn right. No, gone. You're at the front. Can I ask you to make another your, your D100 rolls? 
Uh, again, it's going to be 48. Right. Oh, 39. Brilliant. Uh, you head down, and as you're about to start walking around the corner, it, it, it jumps out at you straight away. Uh, you've, got two, you've got pillars going down, and then the two pillars, one on either side, there's open slits down the inside of the pillar facing the... Um, Facing the, the the pathway, face, facing the tunnel. Uh, yeah. That's the signs of a trap. Probably a swing axe trap, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe you know, maybe blades popping out. But it, it looks very dwarfy, trappy. So I'll stop them here. Yep. There's a trap ahead. Do you have it? Do you have a parking right. stick? Christoph does. <laughs> I have a Sorry, poking stick. An actual useful poking stick. Yep. I had them let it out in traps though. So well, it's a honey it's trap. There yeah. was that young lady there. She was magnificent. Yeah, so sorry. Sorry. poke and I'll poke it. What are you poking, sorry? I'm not, I'm not talking to you, Christoph. What you, what so you I got my, my rattler's pole, so I can use that to like whack the trigger if we know where it is. Yep. But usually it's on the flagstones. So you push down on the flagstones. There's a click and two, and two sort of blade hilts come out. But the blades, by the looks of it, have been snapped off. So you just get like the stumps go... <laughs> Either side, yeah. absolutely no threat whatsoever. Yeah, what you're paid for, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, as you take this thing off, you hear the, the clunking, uh, familiar sort of clockwork clunking, and slowly the the two arms sort of clunk back into position again. Where the blades are now, you have no idea. Quality dwarven architecture. Is there like remnants of body parts or blood or anything like that in this corridor? No, completely not clean. here. No, it's completely clean. It looks like the sort. It looks like the. Um, it looks like the uh, uh, trap's been disabled, uh, it didn't actually, but it hasn't actually taken anybody out. There's nothing on the floor whatsoever. Must be a trap maker out there rolling in his grave. <laughs> so yeah, move on, move on to the next section then. You move so forward. You, Two, three, four. you move forward four, four. squares, uh, and then you come to a crossroads. You can either go straight over, you can turn left, or you can turn right. The left and the straight over uh, directions go off, the tunnel goes off into darkness. But the right hand one goes two squares, about 20 feet, and ends in a door which is closed. Heavy looking iron wrought door, so wood with the iron banding all over it. Well, is your movie that you're looking for? What can we see sure left, by the way, the right as, game, as we right. peer down the left corridor? And nothing that it just, just disappears off into darkness. It's the same with the, with the with the corridor straight on as well. Okay. Well, the door is like a first sign of something. So that's. Yes, uh, the door sounds good. After you. Yeah. Right. So I'll ready my warhammer. Well, yep. my hammer. But it's only a single uh -huh. hammer. Roll credit. <laughs> Oh, Osgood, please be careful because any trap is going to be designed for people taller than our dwarven friends, so it might hit you as you go in. It might miss his head. <laughs> I've got concerns for you. Oh. Either or they, they're designed to get other dwarves, in which case everything will just shoot us in the crop. Yeah. So I just wear really <laughs> heavy armor from the waist downwards. <laughs> so you start... I have a big cod piece, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, full of suck. We've got to get past this floundering joke moment, okay? <laughs> All right, this isn't a game about bars. Yeah, just open the door, please. <laughs> Who wrote the noble? Maybe, that'll, that'll be the new. That'll be the new trade for Warhammer. Is we'll keep making That's these a... terrible jokes about nobles. We keep putting traps on doors. A uh, nobles almost. <laughs> made is there a fight? Noble. No. Well, it goes back to our next joke. No balls. <laughs> what? Yeah, we almost had that earlier at the beginning of the game. No. So you heading down towards this door, yeah? towards the door uh, and that's when Norgon are going to ask you to make an initiative roll oh, oh Christ so that's a no but I only failed it by 11 points is that all yeah uh, pff, fails a fail there's no level of success in this game so you head up to the to the door and it's closed that's all I can tell you I could have told you that but because you had to roll I don't want to go near it <laughs> what do you want to do? What do you see, Norgon? Oh, well, uh, hold on, I've got to spot trap. One second. Oh, now you tell us. Yeah. I'll, I'll look to I the mean, group. Let me know and ask what I can do. So I'll just look to the rest of the group and go, well, I said we got spot trap. <laughs> well, break it down. 
You're not going to try and knock first. Uh, oh. See, this is your problem with back, being back in the city. There's a reason you spend so much time in the cells. <laughs> it's never proven that I was in the cells. It was. There's a later so chance. Well, okay, okay a open the door first. To their chance of evading. Okay, so you're making an initiative test. Um, and, uh, well, make the initiative test with a plus 20. As you go over and check. Like I say, I'm playing loose and fast with the rules. I'm just keeping it simple. Yeah, that's 16 out of 55. 16, yeah? Yep. Okay, you head over, you start checking around the door. There was a trap, but it's been deactivated. By the looks of it, it was um, another like a scythe trap which comes down to the door, but the chain's been removed and the scythe has been pretty much fastened into place. Can I just tinker um, with it a bit? Like, not actually like touching it, but make it look like I'm doing something. You'll be like, look, I just... This, <laughs> It's okay, there was a trap on the door, but I took care of it. Okay, make a make a make a fellowship <laughs> roll. If you can con them. Opposed. <laughs> See what he rolls first. <laughs> That's uh, twenty six out of forty five. Forty nine. Forty five. Forty nine. Gotcha. I mean, it's up to you guys if you want to believe him or not, but it seems convincing enough. That's got to be the worst ever bit of. Um, <laughs> Opposed rolled. <laughs> <Let's polish it. laughs> anyway, so uh, anyway, he's lying through his teeth, everyone. So, uh, so yeah, you basically you check it all. Yeah, you, you sort of make sure the trap's uh, not, not going to be activated. And in front of you is a closed door. It swings in. I'll push it way, open. Not towards yeah, you. I'll push it open. As it starts to open, there's light inside the room. It's like a firelight flickering. The door, as it opens, goes. Arrgh! The door swings open. In the middle of this room, so it's quite a large room, and it looks like, um, like a storeroom. So there's old barrels and old crates. There's all sort of racks and netting on the walls. It's all rotten now, of course, and all smashed up. This is obviously where they kept food and equipment and all sorts of bits and bobs. In the middle of the room, there's a lot of these crates and, and what have you have been obviously been piled up. And the first thing that hits you is this heat, like a really stifling heat, because there's no way of, of, of the air getting clean, and smoke, a lot of smoke. Um, and that sort of hits your eyes and stings straight away, so your eyes get a little bit blurry. But what you do see is this fire in the middle of the room, burning quite brightly and quite loudly as well. So all the popping, hiss and crackle of the bone, of the uh, of the wood uh, breaking and, and bursting. And standing around the fire are six orcs. As the door opens, they all look and sort of look and stare. They're all in, in the middle of what well, looks like all in the middle of about to take a drink of something. And they're all like, stuck sorry, into... wrong room, and just close the door. <laughs> yeah. Are you, you going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You say that. You go out of the door. One of the one of the orcs goes. Well, fair enough. And but now, as the door's sort of closing away, the orcs go, "Oman!" <laughs> and he pulls this big wicked wicked sword out and goes full on. Uh, I don't know. Age of Reckoning trailer. Wow! <laughs> and they they all come running forward towards the slowly closing door. I was posted a bit faster. I, 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 I'm backing down the corridor to yeah, the Yeah, back up junction. to the, the, the crossroad so we can do a crossfire barrel yep. bottleneck nonsense. Okay, you get, managed to get the door closed. I'm going to ask you to make a strength test. To take your strength score, I need you to times that by 10 and roll a yeah. d100 against it, please. Uh, that's a fail. That's a fail. And the orc, I need to jump between pages. I would love it if he failed as well. Oh. That's better. Jump between pages and the orc rolls. Strength. Now, sadly, the orc actually passes. Uh, only by oh, two no. percentiles, but it's enough. As you're pulling the door closed, the orc sort of runs forward, grabs hold of the door, and starts pulling it open in the opposite direction. Norgon, of course, they're orcs. So straight away, your um, yeah. I'm pissed off. I'm a pissed off dwarf um, attitude kicks in. You can run between um, my legs. <laughs> Ow! Don't raise the warhammer. So as the, as as he's basically um the while well, the orcs basically trying to pull the door open, he's got the, he's got he's got hold of the door handle with one hand. And he's got the, that horrible, wicked, serrated scimitar in the other, going Bruh! as he's pulling the door open. Right. It's I'm like a really, you. really, really green and ugly, said James. Bruh! As he's pulling what the door. What is it good for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I'd um, like to step in and smack him in the face with a warhammer with a strike to stun. Go for it. You step in. You take the swing. Please, please roll a d100. Yep, it's a... Uh, weapon a skill less. Strength versus his toughness check. Uh, well, you've got to hit, hit him first, so make, make you attack. Yeah, zero one. 
So Whoa. that's the head, and to the head as well, which is quite handy. It's a good first roll in combat. <laughs> so I need you to roll a d6 and add your strength, please. Uh, roll the d6, isn't it? Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, right. So this is where I get dicked over by my own dice again. Four. Four. What's your strength? What's your strength? Uh, my strength is three. So it's seven points minus his toughness of four, uh, which is three. So uh, if I remember rightly, for every point, it's a five percent chance uh, of knocking him, knocking him out. Yeah. Yeah, I rolled a two. Brilliant. So you step forward with the warhammer, you swing it over, smack him right in the face, as he's going whoa, he goes whoa. He falls over completely backwards, <laughs> absolutely blanked out, unconscious. Meanwhile, you got him. Only the, five the, left. The other five, the other five <laughs> are also come running over as well. <clears throat> uh, as he falls back, he's still got his hand on the door handle. I'm going to ask you to make another strength roll there, please, Lloyd. God damn it. Uh, sorry, Osgood. Uh, yes, that's ten out of thirty. So six. Uh, thirty. Yeah, you managed to hold the door in place. He doesn't pull the door open any further. But now the dwarves in the room. The door's pretty much halfway open. And the other orcs are running over. <laughs> You're like, Aaron, closing the door. No, it's fine. No. <laughs> You'll be fine, he's a dwarf. Yeah. We don't have to pay back tag, back tag to corpses. <laughs> Is that right, Christoph? <laughs> I'm, uh, he's doing fine. He's doing marvellously well. <laughs> don't ask Christoph. He'll start talking about his dick again. Get so... another one! <laughs> Kill the orcs! <laughs> Hooray, finally. Yeah. It's different. So, like, I'll... Yeah, like, I'll, I'll bring out my sling... Yep. Uh, to sort of try and like do punch shots around the walk. So they're ready okay. to go toe to toe with these guys. Brilliant. Well, it, it's going to be one round. Uh, you, uh, you're not going to have time to load your sling yeah, and swing it and, and what have you. So, you've um, yeah, you got your crossbow loaded. To straight away. You've got your crossbow loaded. Well, so while you guys at the back, you can hear what you can hear the shouting, you can hear the orc going for it. Um, yeah. The dwarf goes in, does a battle cry. Uh, well, what is it you're going to do? You can get into the room if you push past, but so these doors are quite wide, like I say. So it's up to you. What do you want to do? I think pushing past seems like a really bad idea. Um, mm. So I'm not doing that. Um, I'm just readying and aiming the crossbow in the general direction of the door as I hear the shouting. Um, oh, I, I'm standing on the corner making sure no one can sneak up on my <laughs> archer friend. <laughs> Putting my sword that. and covering his, yes, his blind oh. side. How noble. <laughs> I so... appreciate that. So, um, well, the orcs is... are winning over. Um, yep. Their initiative is 30. Has anybody got an initiative of less than 30? No. No, you're good? All good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm 35. Brilliant. 34. Um, well, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. well, in that case, then, uh, Osgood, you can take the next swing if you want to. All right. Uh, so, swing, I've got training in it, so I'll just need ballistic skill. Well, you're not going to have time to pull your sling out, load it, and, and yeah, that's fine. It. Then I'll yeah. just do that. Then that's fine. You're going to take a swing, yeah. Uh, if no, I can reach him with a sword. He's loading. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be your standard weapon skill roll. Yeah, uh, your swords okay. out. Uh, that's failed. Okay, you take a swing and, and sadly miss. Uh, by the way, guys, just a very quick, quick addition. Door. Very quick addition to the rules here. If an enemy takes a swing at you and hits you, if you roll against your own weapon skill, you can actually parry that blow, but you will lose your next chance to attack. You can do that as many as many times as you have attacks. At the moment, you've all got attacks one, um, but it's a, it's a good way just in case uh, someone's going to gonna get in a, a death-dealing blow. And they can keep belting you until they run out of attacks or, or they miss, then you can hit them back. So, yeah, the orc comes running in um, and takes a, uh, you take a swing and, uh, and sadly miss. The orc takes a swing back with his short sword. He rolls an 83. That's a complete miss. Um, and that he goes swinging past. At this point, you're going to have to let, door, let go of the door. Uh, dwarf, uh, Norgon, you can attack another one if you wish. So I've got the one that's down at my feet. Yeah, he's unconscious. Dead, unconscious. Unconscious. Right. In that case, then I'll go for the next one that's coming at me. Watch out. Here comes running forward. You go leaping forward with the Warhammer. So let's have another Warhammer roll, please. Warhammer. Brilliant. Oh, 14. 14? Good hit. 14, uh, 14 uh, out of 43. Okay, yeah, that's no worries. Uh, you take the swing, you swing and hits. So please roll a d6 and add your strength score. Uh, do, 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 that is 8. 8 minus his toughness of 4. That gives him 4 points of damage and knocks his wounds oh. down to blah, 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 blah. So, hang on a second, let me just get another pen out. That sticky note there. 
Put that sticky note there. Uh, and you hit him. Uh, he howls in pain as the, your sword draws blood. He takes a step back, takes a swing back. He rolls an 86, his shit as well. So he steps back, he takes another swing at you, his sword goes wheeling over your head. He obviously thought you were taller. So, uh... Can, through the, can they see these guys through the doorway now? Uh, yeah, you can see them. They're up against these orcs now. And a what, bit, a bit right, of so the one that um, Norgon's just hit, I'm going to see if I can hit him with the crossbow from the... Pull off his shot, you're going to shoot him with the crossbow. Yeah! Shoot him with the crossbow, Steve! So pull off his shot, uh, D100. And Bless. I have failed. You may be failed. <laughs> He, uh, the bolt, you, know, you take aim, you pull the trigger, there's a boing, the bolt flies straight and true as long as you're aiming for the wall. So, yeah, unfortunately, he goes past him and misses. Um, almost! Um, wall, almost yeah. got him! <laughs> almost got him. Uh, the wall uh, dies. <laughs> <laughs> the wall collapses, actually kills everyone. Well done. So, uh, Christoph, it's up to you now. Hanging at the back doing fuck all. I'm, I'm directing, I'm leading, I'm... Yeah. Yeah, you keep going, kind of yes! Yes! Yeah. Inspiring, yeah, 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 inspiring leadership skill. Yes. Yeah. Um, strike them down, my friend. Strike them down. I'll guard to make sure no one sneaks up behind us. Brilliant. So, uh, Osgood. He's my favourite character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> Is it, I'll, wait, I'll go wade in with my sword again. Uh, okay. Like yeah. You go flying in. You make another weapon skill roll. And cut down some greens. That's uh, another miss. Under the mess. I need to get go of this door. Yeah. I'll, let, I'll just push the door open. This yeah, you're going to push the door open. Use yeah. it as a shield is failing. Okay, yeah. you push the door open. Make a, a half weapon skill roll. So, half your weapon skill, uh, rounding down, and roll against it, please. Uh, 0 8 against 20 something. 22. So, yeah, 16. You succeed. Brilliant. You sort of think, you know, this door just getting in the way now. So, you kick the door. One of the orcs running at you, the door goes slamming into his face. Uh, roll a d6. Uh, four. Four. That particular orc, that's orc two. Yeah, that's going to daze him for a round. Uh, he's quite he's quite annoyed, actually. That somebody slammed the door in his face. It's kind of rude. So, yeah, you sort of <laughs> swing the door open. It slams into his face. He goes staggering back with orc blood, which I assume is green, uh, pissing down his face. Uh, and then the orc swings back at you, and he, he misses it as well. Um, and then we slip over to Norgond. Got your name right. I nearly didn't. Um, it's your attack, Norgund. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just before I make a swing for the guy I hit last time, I'll shout to the archer. I'm assuming behind me, uh, point to the one that's on the deck and say, "Shoot at him," and then take a swing at the one in front of me. Shoot him. You can't miss. Uh, it's Warhammer. So okay, then yeah, make your roll. Make your attack. This way. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 57, so I've, I've missed. So you take a swing and sadly you miss. He takes a swing back. He rolls a 32, he's going to hit. So you can parry that if you want to, or do you want to try and take it? Um, I've actually mastered, so I've, I've actually got a specializ specialization for parrying weapons, so I've actually okay. got the buckler. So I'll yeah. play. Okay, brilliant. Okay, um, in that case then, you need to make an initiative roll, please. Oh, my third worst stat. Well done. And I've just rolled a zero two. Brilliant! Wow. I can't believe it. So you bring up the buckler. Uh, <laughs> he takes the swing. He managed to catch the catch it. Um, yeah, knock the blade away. He's not going to be able to get an attack in. Uh, the other orc that you, uh, is run, running past you guys and is going to be is heading actually uh, for you there, uh, Amadeus. So you can shoot the guy on the floor if you want. It's a prone target. You'll get a plus twenty to, to hit. Or you can shoot gotta, the orc. I got to spend a round reloading. <laughs> Oh shit! You're right. <laughs> so, uh, well, what do you want to do? Uh, um, well, I, I'm, I was going to reload, and I see this guy come charging down the <laughs> corridor towards me. Um, I, I, as he's going to swing at me, I'm going to try and parry with the, the crossbow. Well, you can make an attack first if you want. If you can draw a weapon, but you'll be a, you'll have a minus ten to your weapon skill. That, that, it, it's my weapon skill is twenty two <laughs> as it is. So your weapon <laughs> skill is what? Sorry. <laughs> 22. And you, and you okay playing this character, yeah? So, uh, <laughs> so he, he, comes, he, comes running, he comes running out. This is Warhammer, for God's sake. God, I don't know how much clear I can make this. 22. Made some debate You've gone a dog, two, two D, 2D 10 plus 20, <laughs> and I rolled two ones. Oh, my dear God. You're just too honest for your own good. Yeah, okay, well, you're running forward. 
Uh, do, you, do you want to make an attack, or are you just going to stand there and possibly I, I, parry? I'm, I'm going to just... I think I, the way I see it is he's coming charging towards me as he's trying to reload the crossbow. And yeah. as this thing comes up, he's basically just going to have to lift this crossbow up to try and parry this blow as it comes in. That's how I'm seeing it. So. Well, he comes flying in, and he rolls a 24, he's going to hit unless you parry it. Um, and I guess I'm using weapon skill for this, right? Weapon skill, yeah. You're 22 or less. <laughs> I didn't mean uh, to. Eight, 81. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. I thought you were going to say 18 then. I was going to go, congratulations. But no, it's bollocks. What's your toughness? Uh, toughness is good, actually. It's four. It's brilliant. Uh, have you got, are you wearing any armour? Uh, chain. So I've chain. How one. many points uh, does that give you? Only on the body, though. <clears throat> okay. Oh, well, he hit you for, what does it say? So we're 24. So that's 42. Uh, where is my... And this is where things fall apart. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, no. I'm, I'm having to do... 42 is left arm. Oh. Left arm, thank you. Okay, body okay. only. So just four points. So it's basically, uh, and I'm looking at an orc, he's hit you. And his strength is four. So basically the damage that you're taking is whatever I roll on this D6 dice. Okay. That's two points of damage. Cool. What's your wounds? Uh, seven. <clears throat> okay, brilliant. Okay, that's okay then. So the orc, come, well, it's not okay, he's just hit you with the sword. So he comes flying forward, it's bloody painful. And he smacks you right in the arm. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't, it does break the skin. It's not flowing blood. Uh, it's yeah. probably going to leave a nasty mark in the morning. You need plenty of witch hazel on that. But it, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it hurt, and that kind of staggers you slightly. Now, yep. because you tried to parry with the weapon, that means you're going to lose your next chance to attack. I'm afraid. Uh, and then we come to the noble. Of course, I am injured. You remember from the last adventure. I am going to step forward. I am going to strike the orc down. Brilliant. He comes stepping forward to strike the orc down. He can't parry because he's got his focus on Amadeus. You step forward, Christoph, the goddamn hero. Roll your dice. I knew you wait. It's going to be crap. Critical fail. Cuts his own penis off. 46. <laughs> I fa I'm going to use my luck. Uh, oh, okay. I, I've, I've, only, I've only missed by... Yeah I'll, yeah, I'll use my luck to make that uh, 36. I hit! Yay! To the body. Yay! It's a look point of luck used up for today so oh balls have dropped that so i need you to roll your d6 and add your strength score please five oh. plus three is eight that's very good uh minus his toughness which is four and that's hit him for yeah, yeah, points of damage and that's hurt him uh, and that's drawn that's drawn his attention onto you actually um so obviously you're a big effect you're on with the sword and not with a piece of wood so yeah you've paid you come running forward you come flying in you smacked him in the body i think he was yes. you probably stretched across a couple of ribs uh i think you've actually damaged his tattoo you've miffed him off a little bit so yeah he's turned and his uh, attention is on you now meanwhile um your dog osgood he stood there yeah. watching not doing anything classic <laughs> what do you want to do uh, I wouldn't mind if he joined in. You need to make a leadership roll, then, please. I know. <laughs> don't forget your bonus for animal handling. Oh, yes. Don't forget your bonus for animal handling. Was it like 10%? Uh, just it? wait oh, for you to roll. Oh, no, I've got it. Yeah, plus 20. Was it you roll 52 or 54 or something every oh, time? Oh, I actually got it? a success this time. So 12 hey. out of 51. Wow. What are you instructing oh, to do? Kill. Kill. Yeah. Attack <laughs> the green thing. Kill it. Which fight one? it. Whatever, which, which whatever you can manage. All of the above. You got three to choose from. Which one? Uh, the one that's in the corridor uh, with Amadeus. Attacking these guys. Okay. Yeah. Pre defend Amadeus. Your dog goes Kill running forward. <laughs> leaps through the air. This little small but vicious dog leaps through the air, and I'll make you, let you make the roll. Actually, he's got a weapon skill of twenty-five. So please roll a d hundred, and you need to roll twenty-five or less. And because uh, actually, because... Oi? Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> roll d six and add three. Uh, six. Six. <laughs> Just go straight for the eyes. Go for the eyes, Reggie. <laughs> the eyes. The neck. It's, it's the right, it's the the right arm, isn't it? 21. <laughs> 21. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, he's gone he's flying for the air. He's slammed onto his arm. He's Which hopefully is sword arm. Just hanging. So can you roll... Uh, what is, uh, did you roll? It's a minus one critical. So please roll Only a D100. A flesh wound. <laughs> please roll a D100. And the higher, the better, please. 95. Are you shitting me? <laughs> 95 on a... Okay. So he goes flying forward. Oh no, oh no, teeth and claws to the arm. <laughs> he just torn his arm, arm, arm off three. like that rabbit in Monty Python. Yeah, almost did. Uh, but, but 91 to 100 is 15. So uh, a major artery is clawed or bitten through. 
uh, basically it kills him. He goes flying through the air, <laughs> wraps onto the underside of his arm, and literally just rips part of it. Blood comes out, <laughs> it's not all over the place. The orc's sort of howling and staggering around, as there's blood going all over the place, uh, like a samurai movie. It's up the walls, he sort of hit, falls onto the ground, and yeah, that's a very, very, or at he least he falls unconscious, and he'll soon be dead orc. And I can't believe he wanted rid of Reggie. <laughs> Um, I mean, okay. he did try summon a ghost circle, but you know, he's redeemed uh, yeah. himself. There we go. He's done all right. Uh, in the yeah, meantime, I didn't see it happen. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's another walk down, actually. That's that's two. Out of six, there's four left. So, in fact, it's your attack as well, actually, Lloyd. Um, sorry, um, Osgood. Right, well, I hope there's a better luck. I hope you do as well. There's one it's first on the ground. Uh, it's... 44 out of. 44, so dead on. Dead on 44. Yeah. So you go flying in, you smack this orc. You've already hit him once, haven't you? Yeah, uh, no, I haven't hit anyone yet. I haven't hit anyone yet. Okay, so I'm getting confused between you and the dog. <laughs> you? So you go flying in, you uh, you hit him, and you roll. Oh, no, I hit him left. with the door. I hit one of the guys with the door. That's why I did it. Uh, yes, so right, D6. yeah. Uh, D6 plus your strength. Uh, seven. Seven. And it's four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's hurt him, but he's still there. Um, he goes staggering back, he takes a swing back, rolls a 36, and sadly misses. Not sadly, I'm completely um, sort of impartial as a GM. And he basically takes a swing <laughs> and misses, uh, sadly, for the orc, of course. Uh, and, then time, we, pal. Yeah, and then we move on to the dwarf. <laughs> right. uh, Norgond. Yeah. What tricks so you have at your slave? You want to finish him off? Right, so the one that was behind me is... He's uh, now dead. Next turn, or this turn. Oh, yeah, sorry. The one that no, was he's dead there. now. He, yeah, dead. don't worry about him. He's out. He's, he's out for the count. He's <laughs> going to die. He's the one that went in the corridor. Is the one that uh, Reggie just killed. Fair enough. I'll keep so, going for the one that was that I hit the base. Okay, gotcha. Uh, well, he's unconscious on the floor, not moving. There is another walk, of course, taking his place. If you want to. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. That, the, the one that already hit. So yeah, I'll go for him. Right. Brilliant. <clears throat> Take your swing. Eight hundred. No bollocks. It's a miss. Um, can I, can I use a temp? Can I can I use some luck for this, or is that? Uh, you know, have you got luck? Have you got luck? Uh, no, I've got three fate points. Uh, you can use a fate point if you want to hit him. Uh, automatic hit. I'm not going to lie to you. That is a bit of a waste of a fate point, but that's completely up to you if you want to use it or not. That's great. I'll I'll just keep keep the, the melee going. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, he takes a swing back. Sixty nine. Oh. Nice. He takes a swing back, and uh, sadly, uh, again, uh, again, sadly for the orc. I keep on to reiterate that I'm not against the players, as you all know. Takes a swing and uh, and completely misses. Uh, in the corridor, uh, you can finish reloading your bow now, um, uh, Mark. Uh, yeah. Makes you ready for this round. What is it you want to do? Uh, I'm going to finish reloading the crossbow. Um, a, a quick nod to uh, to Christoph in appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and not back. And, and Reggie. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, I can't say thanks. I don't speak dog. Um, just, just, you know. Tip, tip the hat to him. He's a good boy. Oh, boy. That's a good boy. Um, <laughs> you don't want him to come after you, Nick. <laughs> grabbing the crossbow bolt that's on the floor and sticking yep. it into the crossbow. Okay. Uh, get, you were getting ready for the next round. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Christoph. Uh, I, I'm going to move up to the, the doorway now. Okay. Uh, l looking for the next orc to slay. Gotcha. You've got one. You step over the body of the one. There's one unconscious on the floor, and there's two fighting um, Osgood and uh, Norgond just in inside the room. There's two others sort of hanging back, swords at the ready, uh, just waiting for the chance to, to dive in and attack someone. As you well, emerge into the room, easy. Uh, the unconscious one is basically snoring. As you step into the room, uh, they, that's when they notice you. It's completely up to you. You can either wait for them to come to you. Or you can you can go in. I'm going to wait for them to come to me. I'm going to stand on my sword ready. I'll come at you next round. Meanwhile, uh, do you wish to instruct Reggie to do anything else? Since though he seems to be the uh, the MVP of this encounter <laughs> at the moment. Come on, Reggie, let's throw in the fight in here. Okay, who you send him against? Uh, uh, uh the one the one I'm fighting. The, okay, make a lead, leadership roll. Twenty percent, please. Nope. Thing. Nope. He doesn't give a fuck. He starts licking his ass. So what do you want to do now? Uh, as in my, on my attack turn, or...? It's your attack, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have another swing of the orc. Go for it. Swing away. 
Uh, to miss. Miss. The orc swings back. Oh, he rolls a 77. That's a fumble. And as we all know, fumbles are funny. So he uh, takes a swing. Uh, he rolls a 77. His weapon twists in his hand. He doesn't quite drop it. This is, you know, quite accurate um, considering this is a fight. You notice all of this, no problem at all. He doesn't quite drop it, uh, but he loses any chance to attack or parry next round. Hmm. I mean, so he comes flying in. Hit him, it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so as long as you hit him, yeah, it'll be fine. But you won't be able to attack or parry. So you're basically getting a free attack on him. Uh, and that's when we move to Norgond. What are you up to? Um, just realised that I've not been applying Grudgeborn Fury. Plus five you to absolute one. plum. Yeah. So what do you want to do? Um, to be fair, Fury. I was missing wild. What, sorry, sorry, what what edition Warhammer did you create a character with? <laughs> yeah, see, it says it, the thing is, it says it's first edition with all the compendium stuff thrown into it. But I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that's all twaddle. So. Uh, okay, well, I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what to do. You're fighting against your actual... But these are green skins you're fighting against. This is this is a, a, an ancestral grudge between you and uh, an orc green skin kind. I'll give you a plus 10% to your attacks. So, okay. yeah, make, make your attack. Still missed the last couple of attacks, so, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, you've, just been, you've, just, you've just been building up to it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, oh, uh, 37. Of hit. Is that a hit? Yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. You take the swing. Uh, Strain, where does that hit him? Because I haven't got the chart to hand. So what, what did he roll? 73. 73. So 37 is... No, sorry, no. no. You roll 37, oh. it's gone to 73. 73 is body. Yeah. Body. So you step forward, you would hit him once, haven't you? Yep. That's my pen. Okay, make your damage roll. Wait oh. a minute, let me see if he parries. Actually, no, he's not going to try and parry. So make your damage roll. Uh, five points of damage. Five points in total, including your strength, in yeah? Total, yeah, including strength. Oh, that's another point. So he, you hit him, he's still there. He takes a swing back. He rolls a 42, that's a miss. So we then cut to Crossbow Man. He's now got the crossbow ready and he's going to... Yeah. You've got two injured orcs, one fighting uh, uh, Osgood, the other one fighting Norgond. And then you've got two uninjured orcs that are running towards Kristoff. Both of oh, them. I'm going to I'm shoot at one Christoph. of those towards that's going for Kristoff. I will take aim and shoot at one of those. Two shots. And miss. 66. That's a fumble. Clickety click. -a -click. Non-gunpowder missile weapon. 66. Uh, your bolt breaks and then falls out of the uh, crossbow. Basically, when you parried earlier, the sword yeah. came over obviously caught the bolt so you put it back yeah. in and now you've gone to fire it it's split in half a bit of split in of directions everybody's quite surprised by this least of all uh, the orcs so <laughs> yeah it's, it's shocking but unfortunately you lose chance to attack Christoph uh, you can attack the first orc that's running towards you yes so I, will. I, I, I will screaming. I will screaming there's all sort of spittle and pus coming out of his mouth as he goes running forward <laughs> I hit 33 I refuse. I roll to disbelieve. So you take the hit, you take the roll, roll a d6 and add your strength score, please. Uh, eight again. Eight. Oh, where am I? Uh, four, four points, four points, six, seven. You hit him, you, you actually hurt him. Um, well, you hit him with a sword, of course you've hurt him. So he goes staggering backwards, a bit of blood comes out of his shoulder. He takes a swing back. He rolls a 34, he misses by 1%. As his sword comes down, he can actually, he goes, everything goes into slow motion and the sword goes, a little hair on the ND bear goes bing. He just misses with the uh, with the swing of his sword. Matrix dodge, so, yes. So there we go. Wonderful. Well done, uh, Neo. So we then cut to the next round. Um, uh, Osgood, uh, do you want to instruct Reggie? Uh, I'll try again. Leadership roll, please. <laughs> uh, plus 20, of course, for animal handling. Uh, no, that's another fail. Okay, he's now uh, rolled onto his back. He's scratching yeah. behind his ear. I was hoping when they like you would just like take care of the unconscious orc, just out of curiosity. Yeah. But who knows? <laughs> Pit piss on him. Oh, no, he's not willing to participate. Okay, uh, so what well, is your attack? I'll what just take like a swing at the orc again. A swing. Uh, yes. Hit. Hit. What did you roll? Forty out of forty-four. Brilliant. That's 04. It's a hit to the head. Oh, D six roll, please. Uh, that is. Uh, six. Six. One, two. That's a minus one critical to the head. So please roll a d100 right. and roll as high as you possibly can. Uh, 26. 
Uh, I don't think you'd actually listen to what I just said then. But uh, no, yeah, hold, on, I'll re hold on. If I flip it round, it's uh, 62. Okay, uh, but it was 26. So no, it doesn't. <laughs> so you step forward, you take the swing. Um, you hit him in the side of the head. It stunned him, and he can do nothing but parry for D4 rounds. Why a D4? Because I don't have one to hand. I'm gonna have to use a D12, which somebody took the piss out of earlier. Three. But now it's come to the rescue. <laughs> Okay, he's going to be stunned for two rounds. Okay, he can only parry. Yeah. Um, now he couldn't parry, now he can only parry. Yeah, that's where we go. Crazy fool. Uh, how the tables have turned. So, let me just make a note of that, actually. He's down to zero hit points against you. And we are now on to Nosgood. No, Norgond, even. <laughs> Nosgood, I don't know where that came from. Now so both of Norgond. us combined. Like, I was about to like, say, yeah, there's too, there's too many Gs in these names. Uh, so, yeah, what do you want to do? Uh, right, I'll, uh, I'll I'll take up one last strike at the one in front of me. Thank you swing, D100 roll please, weapon skill or less. So it's a 66. Uh, it's another fumble. Everyone's fumbling today. You take the swing, you are a 66, so your over-ambitious blow misses. And you find that you have stretched just that little bit too far, leaving yourself open for a counter-attack. You will lose 20 initiative for the next round and you may parry and not attack. The orc swings back and he rolls a 37 and misses anyway. Uh, we go over to uh, Amadeus. Who's Amadeus. reloading? You're, gonna, you're <laughs> yeah. reloading, yeah? Reloading, wild eyed by this point, yeah. Okay. Um, you're reloading and you'll be able to shoot next round. Yeah. Yep. Use a bolt, not a pencil. <laughs> Use something that works, please. So, um, Christoph. I'm going to try and finish off this orc and I'm probably going to fail miserably. Okay, take your swing. Don't be so pessimistic. It might be Warhammer. 54, I miss. Okay, yeah, that's kind of shit, actually. So, yeah, be pessimistic. So, you basically step in, you take the swing, completely miss, uh, because because you're crap. Uh, and, well, he rolls 91, and he completely misses as well, because he's even worse than you are. So, yeah, you basically just swing at each other at the moment. What's this? He's an orc. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's rubbish. These are shit orcs. So, he basically yeah. comes in, flies in, completely misses. All that muscle, he just... Oh, dickhead. Uh, and then we go on to the next round. Um, and we are now talking again about Reggie. Do you want to give him any kind of instructions? Sinzo, at the moment, he seems to be the only one who's actually killed we'll start, someone. We're, yeah, we'll start, we'll start slow and just be like, can you kill the, can you just kill that, like, unconscious orc there? Just go like on, baby Reggie. step. Yeah, you're going to go, you're going to send him against the unconscious uh, he orc, he succeeds yeah? on that one, 38. Yeah. But who, who sends him against, sorry? Uh, the unconscious orc. Just, like, if I can get to kill an easy floor. target. Yeah. Unconscious orc that's on the floor doing nothing, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, all right, then. He goes running forward and basically locks his jaw. He rolls. He rolls a 21, which is, what, 12? Actually, no, it's you that rolls, actually. So, no, you can roll. Make a D100 roll, sorry. Uh, 25 or less. 12. You're 12? So that's 21. 21. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> There we go. All the twos and ones. Everyone's happy. He goes. He goes flying forward. And basically, locks his jaws around this um, this unfortunate orc's arm and starts tugging you away as if it's trying to drag him out. And, it's like it's trying to drag, drag him out to safety. <laughs> I'll save you. <laughs> so uh, so we can ignore him. Um, onto these. This orc can't attack you. Remember. So he's stunned for two rounds. So you basically get another attack. Uh, three. Uh, that'll be a hit. So Thirty. That's a strike to the arm. Oh, no, we can't. We can only parry, but you're older 70 anyway. So roll a d6. Remember, he's on zero wounds. So uh, that is eight. Eight minus four. That's a minus four critical against his arm. Roll a d100. Uh, 37. 37. That's a 13 against his arm. You go flying in. You sever his arm at the elbow. <laughs> Blood gushes from the wound at a rate of d4 wounds per until storm. Parry this. I was about to say, I was enjoying that description then, so they introduced game. Completely took me out of the moment. He parried with his arm. He did. Oh my god! Oh shit! I'm going to regret that in the morning. Basically, the loss of the lower arm halves his dexterity permanently. Does it really? And basically, he falls unconscious to the ground. He sliced his arm off at the elbow. He's lost his arm, and worse than that, he's lost his watch. And that sort of slams onto the ground. He staggers backwards, slams down onto the ground, completely unconscious. He's out for the count, but there is another one behind him, which takes his place and will oh. be able to attack you next round. So that leaves, that's three down. So that leaves one on uh, you, uh, Osgood, one on 
Norgond and one on Kristoff. So we go to Norgon next. All I can do is parry for this turn, so I will swear That's away with it. So you take a swing. Oh, he rolls a 22. So you need to make a parry roll, please. Yep. Uh, it's just weapon skill, isn't it? Weapon skill. Um, you, you, you took the parry thing, didn't you? So you get a plus 10%. Yeah. No. That's a no. It comes swinging in. He smacks you for a full. What's your toughness, sorry? Uh, toughness of five. Five. Okay. Basically, he hits you on your skin with the blade of his sword, and it bounces <laughs> because obviously it's first edition. They didn't know what they were doing with the rules. So he basically comes flying in. He smacks you. You go to Iron Dwarf syndrome and. The pure rage coursing through your veins, the hatred that you feel to these things that have destroyed your ancestral homes. No, you will not be cutting me today. Mm. On to you there, um, Medeus. You've just reloaded your crossbow. Yay. Who do you want to go for? Um, it, this The one that I was aiming for before is the one that was going for Kristoff, so that's what we're okay. shooting at. Yeah, pull off a shot. Uh, 26, I hit. Okay, oh, wait so a minute. Just, damage hold on, hold on. Can we all right, just take a moment yeah. here? We'll I'll end it there, guys. Money. we end on a high. This is too exciting. Besides, I don't want to get you too full of yourself because things are going to turn okay. shit later. So, no. yeah, so make, make your D6 roll. Shit, what's the... Um... It's a plus four. Plus four, isn't it? Uh, I've rolled a it three, is. so seven, seven points. Seven points, and he's already yeah. injured, isn't he? Yes, Christopher, three. Seven points, four, five, four, six, seven. Yeah. That's a minus one critical. So oh. please roll a D100. What did, you, what did you roll to hit? Sorry, 62, wasn't it? So it's to the body. Yeah. D100, the higher the better. Uh, 51. <coughs> That's a 7. I do apologise for coughing down the mic there. Right. Your blow snaps your opponent's collarbone. Ow. <laughs> uh, the pain reduces all characteristics by 1 or 10 points. Not that anybody gives a shit about that. Uh, until medical attention is received. Yeah, because obviously the orc system has got a healthcare system. So basically you shoot him in the shoulder, uh, just yeah. straight into his collarbone. He howls in agony. And that allows Kristoff to get an attack in. Do it. Cringy, oh. just thinking about it. <laughs> 33! Oh, Again? Wait. Is that a fumble? <laughs> no, 33. 38 is a success. I hit oh. him. You hit him. I was going to say 33 of a fumble. That would be really funny. But oh, well, no, we've just given him a fumble on a success. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I slipped and killed him accidentally. That's the fumble. Uh, only but five damage, though. Five <laughs> only damage. Only five, so that's another minus one critical. Um, that's to the body as well, I think. We'll just say body for now. So, my another one on critical 26. 26 on the roll. Uh, that's three to the body. Your blow cuts deep into your opponent's chest, jarring a rib. What is it with you and ribs? Your opponent is knocked to the ground and may only power you for the next d4 rounds. d12 Ooh. to the rescue. A uh, one round, you may only power you for one round. Um, so basically, you've just shot him in the shoulder, you just cracked his <laughs> ribs. Just kill him. Still just going. Stop playing with him, you <laughs> bastards. So he hits the ground. There's blood all just... over the place. And then that's when we cut to... Reggie's killed that orc on so the floor. We're, we're just softening yeah. him up for Reggie. That's all. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, getting things ready for Reggie. Um, so do you want to give an order there? Uh, yeah, I'll get Reggie to Alfred. take the nads off the one that they're, that they're doing the death of a thousand cuts to. I was about to say, the one that they're, the one that they're teasing, <laughs> bastards. So, okay, make your leadership roll, plus your 20 for your uh, animal handling. That's a fail. That's a fail. No, Reggie doesn't give a shit about that. He's chewing on the orc on the floor. So, yeah, it's your attack on this last orc. Buffet, didn't I? That's also a fail. 84, okay. uh, 44. Brilliant. He takes a swing back. It's a 32. That's going to be a hit. Um, and he's going to hit you four. Four, five, six, seven. Seven points. What's your toughness? Out. Three. Three, so that's down to four wounds. Have you got any armor on? Uh, yeah, something. Come on. Uh, yes, but I can't remember what the values are. Like a hooded cloak. Yeah, uh, hooded cloak. We'll, we'll say one point. So you've taken two one. points. Yeah. So you've taken two points of damage. So that's two wounds. He comes in. He jabs forward yeah. with his scimitar. Uh, not that you're supposed to jab with a scimitar, they're slashy weapons, but these are orcs. So he comes flying forward, he slashes forward, and yeah, it goes under your, your armoured robe. And uh, yeah, stabs you in the uh, in the regions. It's it's very painful. You feel the uh, pain burning through your entire body. Like you've been stabbed by a thousand needles, but it's just a sword. <laughs> so I still feel better than the other guy. 
Yeah, yeah, he's dead. Uh, so, uh, Norgon, it's up to you. Right, I will attempt to kill the one in front of me and help out the rest of the party with the. Uh... Yep. Take your swing. Oh, uh, eighteen. Eighteen. That goes to eighty-one. We're going to say that's to the uh, leg. He fails to parry with a fifty. Right. That was a fifty-five, actually. That was to parry with. The... Oh, hang on a minute. That's a fumble. Your feeble parry does nothing to stop the blow. Yeah, we know that. Uh, you may only parry until the end of the next round. So you've not only got past his parry, you've also taken away a parry. You kind of parried the parry, so you stopped him from parrying. That's that's pretty good parrying. So you smack him one. Yep, uh, for seven points of damage total. Seven minus four, that's three. He was already on one, so that's a minus two critical. No, I think I'm sure I'm looking at the wrong notes, but I'm past caring. So that's a so what did I just say? Sorry, minus two critical. So roll a d hundred. There we go. Higher the better. Uh, forty six. Forty six. That's a nine. I said a leg, didn't I? Your blow cuts deeply into your opponent's thigh, severing a major blood vessel. The opponent is knocked down and loses d four wounds per round to heavy bleeding until medical attention is received. Going to assume that you're not going to call the uh, the ambulance. So he falls down, it, and next round he's going to take another bunch of uh, of damage, and he can't attack. Um, we then jump to uh, Amadeus, who's reloading. Who's reloading? Well done, you. And so we jump to Christoph, who's fighting against. Uh, Actually, no, he's not. Is that there last one on the floor at the moment? Yeah. Yes, I, I'm going to I'm going to finish off the one on the floor. Finish him. Probably. So take probably. Swing. Do I get a plus for him being prone on the floor? Uh, yeah, go for it. How much? <laughs> uh, plus ten percent. Why not? I'm feeling generous. Nineteen. You hit him. Yes. Oh my God! Things are looking up for the <laughs> for the noble who keeps talking about his penis. So you take a swing down. You go flying. You keep in, mentioning you it, not me. The sword. I know, mate. I'm kind of obsessed now. You go flying and you smack him with the sword and you roll a d6 and add your strength score. Three plus three six. Six points. Uh, it's four, it's a minus two. It's a minus two critical. 81. And that will do it. 81, that's a 16. Where did you hit him, sorry? Uh... Did you also hit? I don't know, I can't remember now. Was it 18? Yeah. It's 81. 81. Leg? Yeah, What's eight? yeah it, it wasn't, it wasn't head or anything. Yeah, go for leg. I'm sure it was the leg. Okay, go for leg, yeah. I remember. Uh, in that was. case, then, your blow amputates your opponent's leg, finally, and uh, and carries on into the groin. Uh, <laughs> death from shock, blood loss, and a rather surprised expression on his face. Uh, instant uh, Death is almost instantaneous. Well, after that, I should hope it is instantaneous, poor sod. Uh, yeah. So that you saw it go swinging up, sort of almost like scythe style, and, uh, you yeah, know, that finishes off the orc um, minus a leg. He was going to take it to court, but uh, he hasn't got a leg to stand on. So we then cut back to... Uh, nobody laugh at that. That's a really bad pun. If anybody does laugh, I'm going to be ashamed of you. So if you go for uh, uh, Osgood... Uh, uh, um, uh, that's just one left, isn't it? I think it's just yeah. one I'm feeding, yeah. Yeah. Let's go take okay. him down, Reggie. Okay. Uh, Make a leadership roll. Ah, success. 35 to 51. Brilliant. Okay, so roll your d100. Uh, 25 or less. Uh, Reggie gets this one. Not okay. very good. That's okay. 56. Okay, he, can, he, 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 he obeys your order, he comes flying forward, again he leaps through the air and goes Rawr! The orc steps slightly left and he goes Rawr! He goes yeah. flying past like him. Like that uh, the python, something about Mary. Yeah, <laughs> the dog's like gone out the window. <laughs> and just completely disappears and uh, smacks onto the floor. You can take a swing at him if you want to. Uh, yes, and that's a hit for 40 at uh, 44. Okay, so that's an 04, it's a strike to the head. Oh, d6 plus your strength please. Uh, Nine. How much? Nine. Nine. Six. Yeah, six plus three. Okay, that's going to be minus uh, four. It's going to be a minus five critical. So please e. roll with a d hundred, and as long as you don't this roll less than roll it, zero one, <laughs> uh, don't roll less than eleven. Uh, ninety two. Ninety two. Is this going to get messy? It is. You're basically going to push, <laughs> smash his skull in. You bring the sword over. It goes down into his skull, caves his skull in. Brain matter of what whatever orcs have got, and gore and bits and bobs go splashing on the floor. In fact, it goes in so deep you've got to put your foot on its neck so you wrench your sword out of his skull. That's all of them. Success. Success. Good boy, Reggie. Uh, 
Uh, it's difficult to breathe. Uh, the adrenaline's up. Uh, you've got lungs full of smoke. Obviously, there's nowhere for this fire smoke to get out of. So it's all hovering in the sea, and it's really weird. It's like dark black clouds are above your heads. Uh, it's, it's very, very misty. Yeah, 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 a little bit of air coming in. <laughs> just now, ventilate just a bit. Yeah. Well, that was, um, that was, that was uh, exhilarating. Yes, you even got one yourself. I also saved Amadeus there. A um, mighty strike into the or orc's side, and then, of course, Reggie came in and... Finished him off. Good old Reggie. So Reggie good old saved Reggie. Amadeus's life. Congratulations, Dirty. You're no, I Reggie. saved Amadeus's life. I distracted <laughs> him away from Amadeus. He was then attacking me, but of course, his skill with the sword was just negligible compared to mine. And the finest swordsman in this area, obviously. Whoever did it, you have my thanks. <laughs> ah, most Reggie. welcome, Amadeus. Most yeah, welcome. It's a, it's a thankless task. It is, it being, is. Being yes. the dog that actually take, does all the work. Well, you know, I'm not gonna, probably not hungry gonna go. Fed him. Not <laughs> patting the dog on the head, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I think actually, guys, that's a good time to take a break. I, I think you're right. Either. Yeah. Cool. We'll so, see everyone we in ten, 10 minutes? minutes. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're now on to part two of this evening's Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay First Edition game, known as The Cave, because that's where they are. They're in a cave. I thought it was uh, so, called Woofrup. Oh, well. Uh, Woofrup, part two. So, uh, that's the name of your god, isn't it? So, here we go. And you've just fought an evil band of orcs in a room in a dwarven stronghold. There is blood across the floor, bits of brain matter, little bits of blood, little bits of other stuff as well, which I can't go into, because it's actually quite disgusting. And it's... Um, the adrenaline is pumping through your veins. I say you're breathing in smoke, you find it difficult, you just simply can't catch your breath. It's very, very stale air down here. Really, really, really strange. Um, but there you have it. Some of you are in pain from your wounds, there's little bits of blood trickling down here. You're covered in orc blood as well, which is, of course, very, very unpleasant. It stinks awful. And it smells like rotten sprouts and, and piss. The fire in the centre is still burning quite lightly, uh, quite brightly. Around there, you see benches, human-sized uh, benches, and, and some sacks and some crates. Obviously, a little area around the fire has been set up for people to sit at. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but obviously, the orcs were in here for whatever reason they were in here for. Um, oh, he's still by the door. Uh, his body's all over the floor. The dog's rolled over, and he's scratching behind his ear, looking for uh, some frost and some food. What is it you want to do? Break open all the orc skulls. <laughs> all, all the orc skulls. Check all the supplies in the room. Uh, see what other exits there are. I'm going to see if the orcs have got any gold or silver on them. No, they're not carrying any, any anything of importance. They, well, they're carrying stuff of importance to orcs. So small stones, uh, bones of, of human beings and that sort of thing. And uh, their armor's useless. The weapons are rusty and crap. Uh, they're, they're a little bit eman emaciated. Uh, so obviously they've not eaten properly for quite a long time. Um, scattered across the floor, across in one of the couple of the backpacks, sort of ripped those open, looks like they were rotted, but there were provisions obviously for people in there, sort of fruits, some meats, some breads and that sort of stuff. They've been eating those as best as they can. There is some vomit on the floor as well, obviously it didn't agree with them because it's not all food. And um, yeah, other than that, uh, there's nothing really of interest in here. The only other exit out of the room, let me find the map, thank you very much. Uh, where you came in on the door, the room is, um, so you've just come in the door, you just come in, the door, the room is four squares across, and one, two, three, four, and five squares deep, and there is an exit door to the left-hand side. Now the fire is an actual fire pit. Uh, it's actually been, it's, it's a big fire, but it has actually, there's all stones going around it, so it, it has been constructed. It's not part, it's not nothing a dwarf would make, uh, straight away. Uh, Norgon, do you notice that? This is just rocks and stones that have been picked up and piled in a circle so that somebody could build a fire in there. That's the kind of thing is usually reserved for, for the outside, but um, it's aesthetically yeah. pleasing, I suppose. But the uh, So the orcs obviously didn't build this fire. And obviously the benches, they didn't make the benches. The benches are relatively new. They're only a few years old by the looks of things. Uh, everything else in here is rotted for, for generations. So by the looks of it, yeah, people have been using this place as either a refuge or a, a campsite. There's, like I said, there's goods and stuff and, and what have you in here that the orcs have got their hands into. Absolutely disgusting. What mm. is this? Human waypoint for travellers in the middle of the mountains without dwarves moderating anything? 
It was a meeting point for Armand and his, you know, thing. Well, you could have bloody asked permission then. <laughs> may may have done, but you know, you're not from around here, are you? You said this was uh, the bad people go, the bad dwarfs go. Well, I'm not sure that Armand de Gwyn asks anybody for permission anyway, from what we've heard of him so far. Probably no, probably not. Even if he was so inclined. I guess the door over there is is where we need to go. That that is what we call an exit. Right, right, right. No, well, this is an entrance, is it? Yeah. But if you're coming in from that okay. way through that door, that will be the entrance, and this door over here will be the exit. Correct? Yeah, I should have. Can I, can I open I the other door? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 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 walking forward. Yeah. Just remember, you uh, walk out the other door backwards. Yeah. Uh, the, the door is already open. Uh, it goes out into a corridor, which goes forward two squares. If anybody's still mapping this, please, just don't bother anymore. Okay. The <laughs> corridor goes over two squares uh, to another door, but it's not a door, it's just an open archway. And by the looks of it, it goes into a really, really big room. Oh. Um, I'm still scratching things on the on the walls to indicate Although I think you recognise this room. It's the room with all the dead orcs in it. So yeah, yeah. spot traps on the archway, just... Um... <laughs> yeah, go for it, mate. Mate, mate, you roll. Please, please, please Just pass. What? I, I hate being the rogue. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just call it again. Traps. In, isn't it? In, um, initiative. Plus twenty percent. Think. Forty-eight out of fifty-five. Brilliant. No, it's not trapped. So you get to the archway. It looks completely fine. And as you step out, and your torchlight spills out a little bit further. Uh, the air is a little bit fresher because it's, it's a bigger room, of course. And it's a huge vaulted room. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine squares by nine squares, which is 90 feet by 90 feet. It's ridiculous. And it's actually really, really high. Uh, it's supported by six pillars uh, at strategic points. It goes up to a vaulted ceiling, which is supposed to look like the inside of a cathedral. So it's all uh, sort of also really, really, really high. And each pillar, the base of each pillar is a forge. Uh, there are anvils lying about, uh, trolleys, work tables, everything. Obviously, this is where the dwarves did a lot of their a lot of their work. The forges, of course, are cold, very, very cold. The ashes have been scraped out. Um, there's absolutely nothing in here. It's, it's a shame to see, um, especially uh, for you, uh, Norgon. You've been to... Um, Dwarf making halls like this before the sound, the smells, uh, people shouting out, ouch my thumb. It's it's really, really, um, it really, there's a lot of activity. It's really, really warm and very, very homely. Uh, to come into a place like this, it's so, so cold. Uh, it honestly feels like part of your heart since you just shriveled up. It shouldn't be like this. Uh, dwarf, dwarf homes, dwarf strongholds, they should be full of life and activity and heat and the sounds of hammers and sparks flying. Uh, but all you get in here is a sense of devastation and, and misery. You actually feel it as you walk in. Did I pile that on too thick? I think I may have piled that on too thick. Either way, you've walked in there and it feels like shit. So it's, um, yeah. Any other exits? Or entrances? Uh, oh, oh, only only exits going. from his heart. So, uh, yes, there are. So on this same wall, there's a door to the right. And then there's double doors on each, of the far, on, on each wall to the far side and to the left and to the right. Each one of these are closed. In the darkness, you hear a skittering sound. Oh. So yeah, camera out, gobbles. Pity you can't light up the porches just for like a light, a bigger light door. You mad? That take hours. Did I'm you guys hear right. something? I'm sure, I, I heard some skittering. Ah, no, that's yeah. okay. Wasn't my um, uh, beer in that's, there. that's just rats, right? They say as I look at. I mean, rats uh, come in Norgon. all kinds of sizes. It could be big, giant rats. As we all know, those giant rats don't exist. So uh, don't talk nonsense, man rats. What are you talking about? Nutter. Well, I mean, maybe not at a street level, but you know, sometimes people take rats as pets and they flush them down the toilet. And then they grow to like massive sizes in the sewers. I've seen it with my own eyes. Giant albino rat. Well, on the History Channel. Yeah, because they took a lot of sense, don't they? <laughs> Apparently aliens did it as well. Look, <laughs> what, I mean, which one of us has been out of sewers? Alligator-sized rats. <laughs> the weird thing is, the skittering sound is coming from above you in the darkness. 
Oh, that's not good. That's not that rat. Bad. Could be big spiders. Why don't you go shoot upwards with your crossbow and see if you can dislodge on something? Uh, and then we wait here 10 really... minutes while he reloads. <laughs> so, <laughs> door, door is off to the right, did you say? Yeah. You've got a, door, well, a, a double door on each of the walls, ahead of you and left and right. And then you've come into this room, like on the left-hand side of the room. And then uh, along this same wall on the far right is another doorway. Um, so, which way now? Uh, the smaller doorway, I guess. Master's of Wolf. Yeah. We, we are Brother. bowing down to your expertise in this matter. In fact, yeah, make an intelligence roll there, uh, Norgond. Although this, this dwarven brothel doesn't look very good. Uh, what is this, an intelligence roll? Yes, please, yes. Uh, 44. 44. So What's your intelligence, sorry? 28. 28. <laughs> Well, you get, oh no, even with your plus, you still. Um, okay. Uh, no, you've not. This is obviously, this isn't a very old stronghold. This is going, like I say, this is going back probably about 400 years. Usually, there'd be like two or three doors, maybe one leading off to where the mines, where they bring the carts in with the ore so they can do the work, etc., etc. You don't recognize this layout at all. I mean, the actual forges look. Not they look modern, but it's obviously a design that's not changed throughout the ages, and they look fantastic. In fact, the, the design of them. I mean, you, you, you're very used to very practical forges, but these around the the firepiece, they've got carvings of dwarves all the way around them. Obviously, very proud of what they did here. It's beautiful. You, I mean, to work on one of these forges would be a privilege. As far oh, yeah. as the, where the doors lead to and the layouts, there's no markings above the doors which tell you where things are. Obviously, whoever lived here knew, so they didn't need the markings. So uh, no, you you can't tell where the doors where each of the doors go. Left. Yep. Why not? Never admit ignorance. Go left. You walk across yeah. the hallway. Uh, Something else you learn from Chris stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, as you're walking along, uh, Reggie comes running in behind you. <laughs> and he's, he's really loudly. And he's Somebody's trapped in the mine. <laughs> 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 They're down the way. Yeah, ridiculous. But yeah, very, very loud. Make a leadership test plus your plus Don't. 20 for animal handling, please. A minute ago, he's your freaking hero. <laughs> uh, 73 out of 51. Okay, he just keeps going. He runs up to you, he's jumping up your leg. Not like that. He's jumping, he obviously wants attention, and he's just yapping yeah. and yapping and yapping and yapping and yeah, yapping. Yeah, yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping. What are you yapping about, dude? Yeah, okay. yeah, sort of yapping, and he keeps yapping. And as you pick him up, he sort of tries to hide under your, under your coat. Oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Goes quiet. The, 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 the just, of the, that's of that's from the room we just there. left, right? Or is this from a different? Oh uh, no, no. This is you walking across this big room towards the left hand okay. door. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I think there's something big behind us. Let's not turn around and dwell on him. Yeah, you hear this deep. When the shadow of light comes through and all the goblins scream and run off. <laughs> that doesn't happen. I was just having a flashback. So you head over to this door to the left hand side. It's a big double door, huge double door, and above it. You see carved an anvil and a wheel basically sat in a wheelbarrow um norgon that basically means this is where they used to bring goods this is this is the indoor for the ore that they use and but yeah there you have it and it's closed massive double doors not like sort of cathedral sized doors these aren't um iron wood uh, these are proper dwarven stone doors all carved um there's no elvish on it because this is warhammer so it's all carved, all beautiful. There's all pictures all down it. It's like the, each door tells a story. There's dwarves doing things and doing other things, and there's one dwarf there doing something else. It's it's absolutely gorgeous to see. Melon. And uh, no, nobody else. It's worth a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Traders came in through this door. Well, everything beyond this door is all foreign book. Well, let's try to get this door open rather than finding out too much about this skittery noise. Yes, I'm not sure I want to hang around in this room any longer than is necessary. Yep. <clears throat> big door, the big pools, they're easy to pull. These things are on pivots. Uh, it's, it's dwarf and engineering, so it's the best, but because they're old and they're a little bit fused, it's going to take a little bit of a pull. Now, you can get two on each door. That's no problem at all. There's plenty of room for you to pull. Um, so who... Well, uh, basically, what you're going to do is add your strength store, scores together. Okay. And um, whoever's pulling on whatever door, and then it's a D hundred roll against that door. Okay. And you get one chance, by the way. 
So who wants to go with who? We all go together on one door. Oh, that's no, probably... the, the most you can get is two per door. Okay. Got... Yeah, my strength is three. My who strength. Wants to go? Yeah, sure. Um, right. Uh, I'll take the door on the right. <laughs> who wants to take the one on the right with them? I'll help you, I, I guess. And the other guys on the left. Okay, I'll so what are your strength run. scores? Uh, mine's three. Three. three and and three, so sixty percent chance. Do you want to make the roll? One, one, of, one of you can roll. No, you That's make right. the roll, mate. Okay. <laughs> that way, if you fail, you can blame. That's such luck. Uh, we failed. Okay, so you start, you start yanking at the door. It's not budging. Meanwhile, on the other door, what's your strength scores? Uh, three, three, and three. So again, sixty percent chance. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I'll get I'll get Reggie <laughs> to pull on my trouser leg. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's yeah. not he's not he's not moving from his jacket. It's terrified by lots of he's shaking in the, under his jacket. Let's go. 60, 60 or less. Thanks, <laughs> no. How much? Sorry, eighty nine. Okay. So ninety nine. That's a fumble. It's a fumble. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, you push the door. The door. Uh, the door. The door. There's a crack. And then you see it's so badly fused in place, it sort of slips on its hinge slightly and it slams against the, the, the bass relief above and that cracks. The whole thing just splits and then starts falling down towards you. Uh, if you've got dodge blow, then now's the time to use it. Yes. Uh, it's an initiative <laughs> roll. Uh, if you've got dodge blow, you can add plus 20 to that roll. Yes, well, it's yeah, 20 out of 35 without the bonus. So. You okay? And Norgod? Norgond? So I caused this to happen, and I've just rolled a 10 out of a, what was it, plus 20 to the initiative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So out of 55, I've rolled a 10. Okay, so you dive out of the way. Uh, you both basically dive out of the way. The whole thing just comes crashing down, slams into the ground with a God Almighty crash, and the echo of that crash echoes throughout the entire chamber again. You're not supposed to break it. You're supposed to open it. Yeah, but on the plus side, it, it can't fall on us again. Oh. Suddenly there's a huge crack. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Maybe so, we should uh, try a, the other door. That one, I say, and I point to the the one at the far end. So you're still in this room, yeah? You're going to go to the far end? I, yeah. I, I, I just want to get out of this room. <laughs> See, hang on a minute. I, I think okay. they know we're here now. So you head over to the uh, the, the other room. You start, again, you, your footsteps are echoing throughout the room. Obviously, uh, the dog's still whimpering a little bit under your jacket. You get to the other far door on the far side. So this is the right-hand side of the hall now. Mm -hmm. Another pair of double doors carved in exactly the same way. Uh, this one, uh, the art, the thing above it is uh, like a weapon. So there's an axe. There's a, there's a big, thick uh, battle axe, throwing axes, uh, some armor. Um, yeah. The door layout is exactly the same. The dwarves are doing things in a dwarven way on the, uh, carved into the doors. If you could spend more time here, you'd see all kinds of things. All around, there's little alcoves with dwarven heads and statues, obviously honouring the uh, the forge masters who were here before. It's just, I mean, this I, is. I, um... I can take all of this in. I've got I've got night vision. I've got yep. I've got dark vision. I, I, I can take all of this in. It's fine. Suddenly, there's a blinding white light. <laughs> <laughs> um, Norgon falls down with a severe migraine. No, it's um, yeah. You can, it's like I say, it's absolutely. Absolutely stunning work. Uh, obviously, back and back and when this place was was rocking, um, doors were knocking. So yeah, it's really really cool. First off, let us try this door. Okay. Yes. Is that the yes. Same deal? We'll do it the uh, same way. I'll, I'll, I'll let you roll. <laughs> yeah. You roll this time, sixty or less. Eighty-one. Brilliant. It doesn't budge. Other guys. I would love it, would love it if we just the adventure ended because we broke every single door that could. Yeah, that's the it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end. <laughs> I caught a lot of time. Short sure turn. Right. <laughs> that's the end. You shit opening doors. Uh, 60. Dead on. 60. 60. 60 dead on. 60 here, yeah. Okay, you start pulling away, but unfortunately... No, I'm only joking. So you get hold of the ring, you start pulling it, the, the door sort of creaks, and then it's stone against stone, which again, echoes through the hall. Give me a second. It echoes through the hall quite loudly. The door uh, scrapes open, and then you hear that skittering sound again. The darkness above you cannot see what's up there so high not even even at the range of night vision so the door is well, open let's, well, let's, yeah, let's, 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 let's look through the door yeah. okay 
You head out of the door into a corridor. How high Again, is the door? Uh, door uh, is probably about oh, 15 foot high. Okay. That's a big At least door. If, it, if, if whatever it is tries to follow us through, it'll be a lot closer and easier to see you. Mm, yeah. You go out for these double doors. You go basically go straight into a corridor, which is and it's technically straight into a, a crossroads. You can turn right, left, in, into a one square wide door or a corridor, sorry, or go straight over into another corridor. Straight ahead. Well, Norgan seems to know That's where the worst he's going. Thing happen. Yep. Seems like he's been here before. You walk down this corridor. It goes on for four squares. Uh, and then it turns sharply to the right. As you turn right, you hear the sound of running water. It's cold or heads off into the darkness. So yeah, head towards the running water. And the corridor, uh, and then you come to another open doorway. Again, it's been smashed open, um, so it's something extremely heavy. You step into a large room, which is five squares by five squares, and in the very centre is a huge pool. Uh, by the looks of it, uh, the water is running from the right-hand side through a natural, from the left-hand side, uh, from a natural fissure, which is running water along the ground pool, which is then pouring into this massive pool, which is swirling around and then disappearing down, probably funneling down into a, another underground river or chamber. Um, the river's probably, it's an underground river, probably coming down, well it is, it's coming down from the mountain. Scattered in this room all the way around are buckets, and metal buckets, wooden buckets, basically buckets. And uh, yeah, this is obviously the water source. Um, water any... looks crisp, fresh, <clears throat> and there's a like lovely cold. sort of rush of cool air, and so it makes it, makes it very attractive to drink, I should say. Can I fill water. one of the buckets? Yep. Yeah, got my, my, so who who out of a lot of us is cur currently covered in the most blood? Well, you're all covered in blood. Probably not necessarily me. your own. <laughs> but right. so, uh, yeah, that'll be um, uh, that'll be Osgood, who's, who's, who's been hurt the, hurt the most. <laughs> right. So yeah, right. water over him. Get rid of the yep. smell. Yeah. Fill up you get a head, massive right? bucket of water over your head. It's really refreshing, but it's getting right under your armor. It's going to chafe a little bit. But, um, but yeah. Uh, water vaping is fine. Yeah. yeah. It's just basically to get rid of the uh, the, the stench of the blood because I've realised that anything skittering might actually be attracted to that. It's good thinking. It might just be hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're only covered in, like, the blood, you know. It's, 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 it's not like it's appetising to any creature at all. So. Although, knowing no, your guys, look, it's, it's probably thirsty as well. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so. What do you want to do? No other yeah. exits out of this room. There's no other exits out of this room. Uh, I head back to the corridor? Yes. Yes. Yep. Head back. Turn round. You head back down the corridor. You turn left to head to the corridor, back to the T-junk, so back to the crossroads. As you're walking down that corridor, at the very far end, um... Oh, God, you see it first. It's like a shape moves from right to left across the end of the corridor. Just a shadow. Can't quite tell exactly what it is. Look quite tall. It just very quickly just moves across like a fleeting shadow. So yeah, I'll just sort of hand up, pause everybody, weapon out. Mm. like, get get ready, everybody. There's something up ahead. Might be an elf. You have a hatred of elves, don't you? Elves are wonderful, you know. They're lovely. Well, that's turned up for the books. So yeah, it's. Um, Maybe what do you want to do? You want to move? Armand. We don't know how tall he is. So, yeah, I'm going to move up towards the end of the corridor and uh, just carefully peer around and see if I can see anything. Yeah, you peer around, looking left and right. And when you look left, what you see is the corridor heading off into the darkness. When you look right, the corridor heading off into darkness. Now, there's a lot of dust over the floor. And the only thing that's disturbed this dust in this area at this point is your footsteps. There are no other footsteps. Or footprints, yeah. I should say. Right. So which, which way did the shadow go? Left to right or right to left? Say again, sorry. Which way did the shadow go as we were walking? Is it left no, right left? to left. Right to left. Junction. Right. <clears throat> 
I suggest we go and chase the shadow. Uh, why? Because it's stalking us. Um, and you want to go after it? Well, yes, yes. that way it's not falling. That's good, yes, yes, that sounds a, a great idea. Let's go after the shadow. I have complete faith and trust in my bodyguard here. Glad you agree. Anyone else want to step in? <laughs> Why not? <Let's> <laughs> <go>. <laughs> well, well, that was unexpected. Um, okay, um, I'm going to... Maybe, maybe you should load that crossbow now. It's already loaded. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, you swing your left, uh, and basically you start heading in the direction that the shadow went. Odor heads on for quite a while, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for eight squares until it comes to a right-hand turn. And there's a one square sort of short corridor, and then there's another doorway. Stop and listen to see if we can hear any movement. Uh, no, you don't hear any movement. The door is slightly open, uh, and inside it's just complete pitch darkness. Does my dark vision not show up anything? No. I mean, you can see faint shapes in there, um, but uh, it just looks like a... I suppose you could call it like a bathhouse. It's like a dwarven sauna. Uh, you can actually feel a little bit of heat, but they're probably... Um, you know it's not hot springs at all it basically you can see an area where they would have built a furnace and it would have heated probably under floor um very roman bath style so there's that's like bit there's like sunken pits where they could bathe and that sort of stuff it's basically like a dwarven latrine i suppose you could call it a water closet um but yeah that all you see is the is the shapes of the the baths and and the tubs that they built for themselves there's nothing else in in here except for a doorway to the right Right now, manlings, what you're about to see is a temple to dwarven cleanliness. Mind your manners. A dwarven soul. cleanliness? Yeah, please point yes. through the door. <laughs> <laughs> you head into the room. Uh, yeah, it's a dwarven bathhouse. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's covered in dust, but there is nothing in here. There's no crates, there's no supplies, anything. Is there a pool of water we can pee in? No, there are um, holes in the ground. Um, if they have, if they've been used or not, if they're usable, that's completely up to you. You can risk it if you want to. Yeah, for I, 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 don't, I don't even understand why I'm giving you the option. So the um, yeah, the, you've got a doorway to the right as well. Um, it's an open door. It's an open archway, and there's a short corridor which ends in the closed door. How big is the closed door? Normal sized. Uh, it's not a double door, it's just it's a single door, the ones that, like, like the ones that you've come through before. Because right. I think my cartography skills are way off here, because I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm looking back at the double doors leading back into the main chamber. I've completely cocked this up. It's all right. <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> I, I gave up five minutes ago. <laughs> I mean, he did tell us not to bother, so I didn't. <laughs> um... Uh, I, I'm pretty uh, how many sure that. Do we have? Um, well, we've got a door in front of us, or the way we've just come in. Door. Yeah. Yep. Door in front of us. Let's go on. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you open the door. It creaks open. Uh, again, pure dwarven craftsmanship is a stone door that creaks and it scrapes across the door, and you're back into that forge hall. Maybe you were oh. right there then. It's on mapping. the wall, you know, the door that he came through originally, it's on that same wall. Yeah, this, this was the yeah, door the, the other the side. Was... Yeah. Yeah. I have, haven't we been here before? Oh, no, this must be a different forge hall. Ah, yes, yes. Yes. Can't yes. just have the one. No, 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 of course not. No, no. You hear a strange skittering noise above you. Huh. Maybe that must Louder be the door of air before. conditioning. So what I suggest we do is we back up, close this door, and go back the way we've come, and then go back the other way. That sounds good. I bow down to your expertise, Master Dwarf. You head back to the Dwarven bathhouse after closing this door. 
Yeah. Uh, you head down the tiny corridor. You can turn left and head back down the, the, the way that you came, but the corridor just they'll carry on to the right. Uh, I will. If, I'll, I'll go down the bit of corridor we've not been down yet. Okay, so you're down to the right. You get to the end, it turns sharply right, and then just ahead of you, you see uh, a little bit of support beams holding up a cracked part of the roof, and it yeah. looks like it's this side of the damaged uh, corridor that you saw earlier. Wow, I've really caught this map up. I am completely different place. <laughs> show, show me your map. Show me your map. It might, it, might, it might just be my description skills. Yeah, uh, uh, no, I think this is just all on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so technically, I was right the first time when we came in. What, to go right? Yeah. Ah, oh, through uh, the dangerous area. Right. Uh, that sounds yeah. um, sensible. Obviously, yes. Yes. Totally wrong, I mean, but right. Ahead of you, past this damaged corridor, of course, is the left-hand turn, which then goes back to the exit where you came in. So, do we go back through the main hall full of scuttling horrors and nightmarish creatures in order to get back to that weird room where the orcs were to then go and explore the rest of it? Or... Do we go through this nice piece of corridor that's got nothing wrong with it whatsoever, except for a few maintenance problems? Which you'll all need to make an, in an initiative roll. Please look at your initiative scores. No, I'm, I'm feeling range. confident because I don't think I've made I've made one roll so far, so I'm feeling confident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling lucky that this will go badly. No, let's just go for it. Why not? What, what could go wrong? What could perfectly go wrong? Reggie could fall down a hole. We could lose him forever. <laughs> Our master dwarf could fall and, and anything could happen to us. So you're heading... Where, where are you heading? Are you heading back the way you came or are you going to go through this damaged corridor for absolutely no reason whatsoever? Sorry, did I, did I say that out loud? I do apologise. <laughs> oh, most definitely then. Because you said it, we're going for it. Yeah, okay. You're all going to go for it? Why not? No, oh, Master Dwarf deems to know where he's going. Okay, everybody make an initiative roll. If you got dodge blow, please use that as well, please. Just tend to roll. Do we get a plus, plus, plus for having dodge blow then? Dodge blow then? Yeah, you get a plus 10 to your initiative roll if you've got dodge blow. 16! Yes! Yes, you made it. Uh, yeah, I rolled 9. 45. <laughs> you, what, you rolled what, sorry, Lloyd? I passed. 43 out of 45. Ark. Oh. Uh, 94 on a 44. <laughs> Holy shit. And uh, Norgond? Um, so, okay. uh, with with the pluses, I would, not, I would have had to have passed it on a uh, 45. And I rolled a 46. Brilliant. I mean, oh dear. Uh, so, um, Norgond, you, you take... What's your toughness? Five. Five. Okay, you take one point of damage. What's your toughness, Mark, sorry? Four. Four. You take... Or you take two points of damage. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, as you as you're sort of going through, you're sort of stepping through over the rocks, uh, through the the framework. Again, there's the rumble, there's the cracking. Part of the um, the beam sort of cracks open and slams into the wall. And as you're sort of running forward, big chunks come down, land on the head of the dwarf and on the head of uh, of you, Amadeus. That kind of sets the whole thing off, and the whole corridor behind you just collapses down on itself, comes crashing down, bits of rock, um, soil. Smash timber, it all comes crashing down, completely blocking uh, that corridor. Um, heading further down this corridor, you can turn left, and that's when you see the scratch on the floor, which is marking your way back to the entrance. Ah! Yeah, I've just looked down at the mark and go, I don't mean to alarm you all, but I think somebody else is here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Well, I don't forget your armor reduces your wounds, doesn't it? Oh yes, if you've got armor, then yeah, knock a point off your wounds. Yeah, uh, no, sorry, knock a point off your damage. Yeah, well, well done, thanks for the. Uh, Does it matter where the armor the is on you? No, not in this particular case. I'm being generous. Okay. I'm in mean, a charitable mood for some reason. It reduces the number, so you get yeah uh, one. There you go. So, what do you okay. want to do? You want to head back into the uh, into the dwarven stronghold, or do you want to head to the exit? 
All you found after going in there is the fact that there is a place in that room where the orcs were, where obviously people were meeting. Like I said, the furniture wasn't old. There were some old supplies in there. Obviously, people hadn't been back for a while, uh, which the orcs had been through. Uh, the fire pit had been constructed. That's not an orc fire pit. That's not the way that they do things. They're not that clever. It's um, So, yeah, there is evidence that there were people meeting here. Um, and recently. Oh, and recently. But there's no lead as to where Armand Gwyn would be. So if we've completely ignored you found. everything from that side of the room on this map, then instead of going into that room, if we're still at the crossroads looking... Like in the east. Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on which way you did the map. Yeah. So if, if facing any... facing away from the the camp the, the fire room. Yeah. So there should be as yeah. we're facing away from the room, there should be a corridor in front of us. Yeah, corridor. straight ahead, and then right. To your right. Yeah. So straight over or right? Straight over. So you're heading straight down over. to you're heading down to that original crossroads, yeah. The original yeah, crossroads, yeah. there was, there so was a... Where then, you are now. Yeah, then walking from the campfire room, we're going straight over. Yep. Yeah. From the campfire room, straight over, down, following the corridor. You're not going into the campfire room. No. Or are you no, going... No, we're leaving the campfire room. Okay, so you're going over the crossroads, yeah. heading yeah, down. straight over. Uh, you come past some, some double doors to the right. Um, by the looks of it, they're the same carved doors that leading into the big stone, into the big forge hall. Yep. And then it heads down, and then the corridor turns right. That continues down, and then as you get halfway down that corridor, there's another huge double pair of doors to the right. Again, the forge hall doors. and But then there's a corridor heading off to the left. We go left. Yes, I said all along <laughs> left. And left. You're heading left, yeah? Everybody, yeah. everybody yes, yeah. That? yes. You turn left, you head down this corridor, and then you come to a really large spiral staircase heading further down into the depths of the mountain. Well, this this looks like the way we haven't been here before, so let, should we go down? Gotta go down, devil, go up a level. Are the stairs only... likely to be trapped, though? Should we you know, be checking the stairs as we go down? We wouldn't want to fall. What state uh, is in? Sorry, I missed that. What state are the torches in? Uh, not good. Um, one of them's sputtering down. The others have probably got only a few minutes left. We just backtrack and grab some more torches. I'm just going to say they won't remember to pick up spares. It's easy enough to go back and get some more if you want to. It's yeah, just get some more. Yep. 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 Who's going? Is he going on his own? It, it seems we cruel should go to go drag... in pairs at least. <laughs> yeah, it seems cruel to drag everybody back, but why not? Send a dwarf. I'll go I'll with you. Okay, in. you go back and get the torches. Hmm. However, <laughs> you should halfway... leave stuff at the stairs. Halfway back to the stairs, nothing happens. So you get back to the stairs with the torches, and you, you sort of get those burns. The stairs basically just go straight downwards. Again, they're hewn out of the rock. Again, lots of lovely carvings. As you're walking down the stairs. It's like, uh, you know, Hadrian, uh, not Hadrian, um, Trajan's Pillar, I think it's called, Trajan's Column, and the way that the column was built, and it's got the story of his invasions of, um, I think it was Germania, wasn't it? Anyway, it's, it's like that, but except on the outside of the wall. So as you're walking down the stairs, it's telling a story of the building of this stronghold. Uh, what it's saying is that they find the mountain, they're very, very happy. The first dwarves come in, they find the cave, they find a lovely vein of silver, which of course is very, very attractive for dwarves. As they go in further into the cave, they start to build the mine, that's when they find the water, and they go a little bit further, and then they start to find um, things that they can, like a sulfur, which, which burns really, really well, of course. So that it gave superheated, and that became popular, and they built even more. <clears throat> and then as you come towards the bottom of the stairs, it looks like the store is not over and it's actually saying this is going to be the future. This is going to be a new Karaz, um, Karak. You know, this is, this is the whole mountain they intended to, to hollow out the entire mountain and turn into a, the perfect dwarven stronghold. It's going to be perfect. It was going to be on the border of the Empire and they're going to trade with the Empire and then they're going to give passage to the Grey Mountains, the other side. Where they get to Britannia and then, of course, they've got the Forest of Lauren and what have you. And this, this would have been just the, the perfect passage through the mountains for traders they have the silver there they have the sulfur they were going to make loads and loads of money 
Uh, it, and that's it. That's the, that's the end of the story. Basically, it's a whole bunch of dwarves there holding their hammers up, uh, standing on top of anvils, basically looking really, really uh, communist. No, basically looking really, really pleased with themselves, <laughs> um, ready to, you know, to move on into the future. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. So, so what happened then, Norgod? Did, did, did they just die out or something? They, they're there here with their hands in the air, their hammers raising, and, and yet we don't see anyone trading in here or anything like that. Could something nasty have killed them off? Did you have any what? family here? Orcs is what happened. Orcs is what always happened. That and Skaven. Right. Skaven? What, what are Skaven? You're talking nonsense. So, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Do I smell that? <laughs> yeah, idiots. So you get to the bottom of the staircase and the corridor basically just heads off straight off into the darkness. Big wide corridor this is. Um, again, the statues lining it down either side. It's alcove, alcoves being carved every 10 or 20 paces. The statues are dwarf lords. This is this is the good stuff upstairs. It was all masters and what have you. But these are dwarf lords wearing the, the, the crowns of ladies and kings and generals. There's some there with grudge books, war hammers, double axes. Uh, it's just stupendous uh, as you're walking down here. It looks like it was carved yesterday. This is some of this is some of the best marble, some of the best stone. It's just, um, yeah. It, you are, well, I, I don't mean to upset you, but you know, atmosphere. So yeah, you're sort of heading down uh, this corridor. It is a lot very cool down here because, of course, you are deep into the mountain now. And then when you come out, uh, you come to see right, an archway. It's, it's, it's a doorway, but the doors are open, not sm smashed open, but swung open. Head out into an archway and you come out into a, a vaulted room which is th four times the size of the forge hall that you were in beforehand this is a um a, it's, it's a royal hall this is this is a this is, this is where a dwarf king would hold court it is absolutely stupendous you know the um the halls of the dwarf you see in lord of the rings it's kind of like that so you've got the the, the ceiling disappearing into nowhere it, because you, the torches just simply don't reach that far Columns are stretched out, 10 and 20, uh, 10, sorry, 10 by 20, uh, going off into the distance as you're walking along. There are stone tables all over the place, stone chairs. Like There's little areas for trade and for representatives to meet up and for discussions. Uh, it's basically like an open plan office, but you no know, dwarven style. So it's and this basically all over the place. It's absolutely stunning. As, as you're walking along, even the, the slightest sound that you make turns into a very soft echo. Um, the acoustics in here are amazing. Led Zeppelin over in the corner there would be fantastic. It's literally, and it's a, a, and for you, um, Norgon, you've, the only place that you've been like, anything like this is a dwarf. Is in the dwarf dwarf falls of your home, and you know what these things look like when they're in full dress, with banners and um, pennants are hanging from the columns, uh, talk torches, uh, small fire pits. Um, or, I mean, the actual rooms and some of the areas are so big, you've got um, dwarves running around on, on battle balls, uh, basically to, just to get to where they need to be, to, to speed things up a little bit. It is absolutely stunning. Above you, you can hear the clinking of chains. Um, obviously, things like huge chandeliers, huge burning chandeliers. But they weren't really chandeliers. What they were were these huge, gigantic copper bowls just filled with hot uh, filled with fire with the silvery sulfur and then pulled up into the ceiling to cast light all over the place you can see the shadow of some of them still hanging it's it's stupendous it's it's almost breathtaking but i'm not going to tell you how you feel it's 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 like i say it's, it's almost breathtaking it's absolutely amazing and in the very very center of it all is a huge raised uh dais a uh, bigger well, i say it's huge um but not so much for a human but for a dwarf it's a huge raised dais going up lots and lots of steps and on the very top of it is a dwarven throne uh, carved out of of marble and it's just for even from here it, it's just an absolute beautiful sight and there is a figure sat in the throne or you can see his darkness or you can see his shadow sat there but there's obviously a figure sat in the throne of dwarven stature sat there arms on the uh, you can see a tall helm arms hands on the armrests as you go walking towards them oh, hello you there? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Don't do that, manling. Do we go and have a look and see who it is? You head forward. Uh, it's not your grandfather, is it? <laughs> yes, you head forward to Dwarf Lord for sure. Uh, he's dressed in the finest clothes. Uh, armor is absolutely stunning. We know how it's all designed in the Warhammer world. Uh, his. Um, 
His beard is still long, still and, and it's sort of ringlets with clasps and it holding it in in the helmet is is very, very tight with the visors down. It's got large and each each one of the spikes coming out of it look like castle towers as it's sort of sat on his head. And he's got a warhammer. Um the warhammer looks brand new, looks like it looks like dust simply will not touch it. That's lying across his lap. And he's got his hands on it. And the head, skeletal face, is obviously very, very dead. Uh, this, yeah, the head is, is leaning forward. And, um, yeah. It's uh, it's quite a solemn sight. My, my, that looks like a, quite a nice hammer, doesn't it? I'm going to be taking an eon sort of reverently praying at this stage. Yeah. Or at least, you know, worshipping the ancestors, as you're supposed to. As a, as a dwarf, you, walks forward. As, as about to say, as a dwarf, you know not to climb the dais. That's the sign of respect. <laughs> yeah, you don't climb on the dais until unless you're invited. Um, yeah. So yeah, at the bottom of the steps on the flagstones, that's where you do your kneeling. You, you've got your warhammer down, your heads down, and you're praying to the to the answer. whoever he is. You have no idea who he is. But but yeah, but he's in the throne. He's got the, he's wearing royal armor and he's got a, a massive uh, a warhammer. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. Yeah, he's somebody. Probably Christoph. What are you gonna do? <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm walking up to have a look. Yeah, I. <laughs> Amadeus is kind of basically, he looks across at what whatever Norgon's doing and he, he does his best to kind of imitate whatever yep. Norgon's doing. As you both sort of nail down. So, what are you doing, um, Osgood? Yeah, I'm after as well, just in case. You all nail down in reverence. And by the sounds of it, Christoph just walks past you and starts walking up the dais. <laughs> is that right? Yep, that's basically it, yeah. You start walking up and uh, step, 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 step. About f- ten, ten, oh, about ten steps. You have to go up, and he gets to the level of the throne. He hasn't moved. Well, he's dead. Of course, he hasn't moved. So he gets to the top, and yeah. yeah this is because it's quite good. Everyone, good, good, good. Oh, you're, 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 you don't need to bow to me. It's okay. Stop disrespecting the king. King, king, king. <laughs> he's dead. Dead, dead, dead. And... dead, dead. Oh, well, you, you've got this lovely hammer. Don't you want the hammer? I'm not repeating that, 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 that. <laughs> what, do you, what, what are you going to do, Christoph? The hammer, wanting the responsibility that comes with it. Get down. Oh, we, we could take it back and, and sell it for a, a pretty fortune. You don't just do that. It's wrong. Would you disagree? Uh, the... uh, it's a nice hammer. So you, grab hold, you, grab, you grab hold of the hammer, you lift it up, his fingers crack and split and fall apart. His head lolls forward, his body lolls forward. The crown slips off his head, slams onto the arm of the, uh, of the dais and bounces off each step. And it echoes, of course. And then lands at um, Norgon's feet. Uh, the hammer... You see, you see? The, the helmet, it chose you. Christoph. The crown chose you. Perhaps you should you should listen to Norgon. Uh, he knows this 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 area better than it uh, than the rest of us. Perhaps you should just listen to what he has to say. Sorry, you, you carry on talking. I will I'll, I'll, I'll walk down the dais with the hammer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to take the crown. I'm going to reverently put it on one of the steps. Give it a yeah. Quick polish. Then I'm going to put the war hammer down. Yeah. And then I'm going to take the wing axes and put them aside. Yeah. Then I'm going to. Crack both knuckles, bring out the knuckle dusters, and strike to stun Christoph in the nuts. Okay. That's not bad, actually. Three hours and move straight to PvP. That's pretty good. So, um, okay. Take your swing. It's a, a weapon skill test. Uh, you're aiming for a location, uh, so it's going to be minus 10, unfortunately. Uh, but you are definitely going for the nuts, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't believe I actually said that, I said that out loud. So, uh, so, yeah, weapon skill check, please. Um, didn't quite do it. Rolled 57. I should have okay. been in like 33. Take a swing at his privates and you miss. <laughs> There's a joke there. I'm not going into detail. So, uh, yeah, you take your swing and uh, you miss. Uh, what do you want to do, Christoph? Uh, I'm going to step I'm going to step just... back with my sword. Look, don't, don't you strike me. That's breaking your contract. 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 That means I don't owe you anything. <laughs> Oh, me! Echoes out the darkness. B- bouncing off the walls, bouncing off the pillars. Nice. <laughs> voice dropped, pardon me. 
<laughs> At top of the dais, the Dwarf Lord has stood to his full height. His fingers are still cracked and falling off. Uh, you see that there's an unearthly blue glow inside his skull as he comes slowly shuffling down the steps. Hey, Christoph, perhaps you you best apologise. What do you want to do, piss on him? Is that how you apologise for you, Christoph? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry about that. What? I, I, I'm, I'm stepping, stepping, <laughs> stepping away from him. Yeah, I'm going um... yeah, to tackle Christoph instead. Yeah. You're going to tackle him? Yeah. Okay, so uh, make a weapon skill check. Did you, did you bring any popcorn? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to defend the, the honour of the dwarves. I'm rolling a fucking 99. <laughs> oh, that's oh, a fumble! Oh, yes! Fumble. It's fumble time. Fist he and natural weapons. <laughs> the honour of the dwarves is, don't your attack care. attack is awkward. Uh, you need to recover from it before you can strike again. Uh, you're going to lose 10 weapon skill from your next <laughs> round. He's sort of scrappling, but he's kind of got his arms around his waist. And he's sort of throwing himself about a bit. And Christoph kind of just stood there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, the... I, I'm, I'm stepping behind him, so he is between me and the dwarven skeleton thing that's come alive. Okay, it's the right. dwarven. Uh, the dwarf lord is now halfway down the steps. Yep. After all, you were the um, last one to touch the hammer, so you know I haven't got the hammer. Also, did you take the hammer off him? Yes, I brought the hammer down. What did you he... do with it, sorry? Uh, then, uh, then um, our dwarven friend took it off me and put it down on the ground. Laid it oh, reverently right. on the ground. On the yes. Step put my own hammer down. I was then trying to punch you in the nuts as you were. Oh, on. right. So you haven't. But it was your hammer, right? Okay. Yes. So I took the hammer. Okay. okay. Yeah, so you're still holding on to the object. You're still, hold on. you're still holding on to the uh, to the old hammer. Yeah. What do you want to do with it? Oh, there you go, no good. I'll drop it down into his hand on the floor and I'll step it away. It won't leave your hand. <laughs> you open your hands, it's literally almost like somebody's glued it to your hands. And the Dwarf oh. Lord walks past you, and motions to the throne, and says, It is yours now! And then starts ah. shumbling off into the darkness. I, I have right. a hammer. I had He's going to hammer in the morning. <laughs> um, well, that took a turn. Uh, Does that, that mean I'm, I'm king of the dwarves now? It means you're the king of this stronghold. Yes! My father will be proud of me! I mean, it's about time. That's true. That's true, yes. I have done a few things in my past that have been somewhat questionable. There was a right time now, in the present, he... you, Yes. Literally, this hammer is, is glued to your hands. It's not... It's oh. Literally... I mean, you've got your palms open, your, your fingers are wrapped around it, got your fingers are frozen to it, and it's just not moving. Mm. This is going to be interesting. Um, wh what where's this figure? Where's this figure going? It's heading towards the door, shambling along slowly. Um, Christoph doesn't seem too bothered by any of this, does he? I mean, I guess I don't even know that it stuck to his hand. No, he's, he's taken a dead a dead guy who's walking away his hammer, which he now can't drop, so no, he's not bothered at all. No, but I don't know that. <laughs> That's a good point. <sighs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Um, can I try and strike him in the nuts again? <laughs> For God's sake. You're obsessed with punching him in the balls. <laughs> but yeah, go for it. <laughs> I mean, at, this stage, at this stage, it might create an involuntary reaction. He might open his hands and drop the hammer. Why do we not? Why do we know this won't happen unless we try? It? There we go. Experimentation it's is easy. the is is the way of the future. You're a scientist. That's what that's what it is. Yeah. Roll d hundred. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try and not hit him now for the rest of the game. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dice are trying I, to tell you something. Yeah. What do you want to do, Christoph? <sighs> if you try to hit me again, I'm going to whack you with this hammer. Does, does anybody else want to try anything? <laughs> uh, can I stop in front of the... Consider yourself fired. <laughs> you have I'm been gonna... a particularly poor bodyguard. <laughs> Where are they standing at the moment? Have they, has anyone actually made a move for their warhammer? You also at the bottom of the, of the dais, at the stairs leading up to the, up to yeah. the throne. And the uh, the skeleton of the dwarf lord is heading towards the exit. 
I'm going to try and s s interpose myself between the, the dwarf guy and yeah. and the exit. And uh, <laughs> and I'm just going to say uh, something like, uh, uh, apologies, my lord. Uh, there's been a mistake. We we didn't mean to uh, to interfere. Um, uh, clearly, my associate is not a dwarf. That, that there is there's a mistake. So he looks. He looks at you with his. Well, he hasn't got eyes. He looks at you with his empty eye sockets, which is quite disconcerting. Uh, as he's sort of shuffling along, his mouth opens, but a, a voice comes out. But there's no movement because there's no skin. Uh, it's literally like his soul is speaking to you. The uh, the, the the blue light inside the eyes, um, inside the skull, is is bright and sort of pulsates with every word. Choice has been made. He has taken the hammer. He kind of carries on walking. Uh, I I, 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 I'm going to run after the uh, after the dwarf after the other dwarf, and I'm going to place the crown on its head and it's, yep. um, say in dwarvish in Kazalid, you know, are you going to surrender our birthright to these simple humans? Absolutely ignores. He put the crown on his head. He, yeah. he acts as if it hasn't happened. He just continues to, continues to walk. Yeah, you might have a stronger arguing point if you weren't so blatantly racist. <laughs> Has Christoph given us any indication yet that he's... No, he stood there shaking the hammer around right. like he's trying to get a reaction out of it. Oh, okay. Is, is he still stood on the dais? No, I came down. No, he, he came off the dais. I'm going to retrieve my gear and it's like, well, it's down to you to fix this manling. Yes, you know, we just can't seem to drop the hammer. It's, I don't know. Hmm. What do you want to do? Well, I mean, we, we, we need to find, find this, this Armand thing, Midgey. Maybe he can um, yeah, take it off. I don't know. Is it a nice hammer? Is it a well weighted hammer? Is it, you know? Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Ah. It's also glued to your hands. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Dwarf yeah. Lord continues to walk. He's almost at the exit now. As he's walking along, like bits of his armor and bits of his body are just dropping, like, he, like he's disintegrating in front of your eyes. There's just parts of him dropping away. The blue light inside him is getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Um, I, I, I'm good. Inscription on the throne. I think I need to sit down. I'm going to walk up the dais and sit on the throne. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! This 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 throne is is it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's what it's stone. So yeah, you walk. You start sitting on. We need, need a cushion. Up. You walk up, sit down on on the on the throne. Uh, uh, I, uh, my lord, th 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 this is a mistake. Um, we we're looking for a man named Armand de Gwyn. Uh, have you heard his, of him? He stops oh. in his tracks. He sort of turns and looks, and even though he has no expression on his face because he's a skeleton, and there's parts of him, or most of him, has dropped away now. You feel this intense, unbridled rage coming out of it, like, almost like his soul is on fire. And he stares, he stares directly at you, and it's very, very, very disconcerting. Oh, he has He has offended you in some way. He trapped me here. Gave me the hammer as a gift. Told me to guard it with my soul, and I vowed to do so. And he never returned. He gave me the hammer and said that I should protect the key. The key? Never returned. And then the orcs came, and everyone fled, and our man never returned. We've been led to believe that he is here now. If he is. Well, if he is, he hasn't popped around to see me. No, if, <laughs> uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't answer that. He obviously, obviously, he doesn't know. What is the key that you speak of? The hammer. The hammer is the key. To a door? It is the key. Uh, but where are you going now? Uh, you, you cannot leave. I'm going home. 
But but what of Kristoff? He he has the hammer. What of him now? What? Whoever holds the hammer becomes the protector of it. He has chosen that position. He is now the protector. He will live forever. But he will never leave this place. The hammer will not let him. <laughs> this sounds like a curse. Is there, is there a way to remove it? It is a curse. Our like man says it was a promise. <laughs> it was a curse. He needed me to stay here. He needed this stronghold to fail. He had what he wanted. They all fled here screaming in the night as the orcs burned everything. And he stood and watched it happen. He wanted it to happen. If you are looking for Armand de Gwyn, you are looking for death. But he's... He's clearly undead, so if he didn't look for death... Tell me, King, what is your name? And where is home? <laughs> yeah. My name? I had a name once. I had a home. This is my home. This is... Turns around and looks at the dais. This is my home. We were going to hollow the mountain. We were going to dig deep. The whole of the Empire, the whole of Batoni was going to trade through here. And Armand de Gwyn bought the hammer and he said, this is the key to everything. This is the key to the future. And it was a trap. And then he opened the doors and allowed the orcs in. And I was powerless to do anything about it. I couldn't lead my people against them. And everyone died or fled. And that was it. I had a name once. I had a name once. This pure sorrow streaming out of him at the moment. Yeah. Whereas before you felt rage, now it's just mm. a very deep anguish. We can give you a name if that helps. At least until you remember your old one. Those memories are long gone now. I've either forgotten them or I don't want to remember them. I just want to go home. He takes another step towards the door, another piece of him falls off. If he continues walking, he's just going to dissolve into nothing. He's almost just a skeleton now with rags hanging off him. His arm has just fallen to the floor and most of it's turned to dust. All right, I'll just step out of his way then. Um... Is there anything, any of his armor or anything else that's dropped off that might have had the rune for his name? No. Whatever's has fallen off him, has hit the ground and just turned to dust. If you're not going to stop him, he carries on walking. And then he sort of goes sort of almost, I don't know, Thanos style. He drops to his knees as one of his legs gives away. And as he falls to the ground, he literally goes into dust. And then just, he's just gone. And this is just as he's get, got to the door. Uh, he just, he just, just gets over the threshold and then just collapses into, into dust. The only thing remaining that skitters across the floor is his ruby ring. Same colour as the throne. I'll pick the ring up then. Yeah. Mm. Uh, any markings on it? No. It's, it's pure dwarven craftsmanship. Uh, this is going, like I say, this is, this is ancient work, so it's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. The ruby is real, very real, and very, very well polished. And it's gold with a silver inlay. There's runes around it that don't seem to make much sense. Uh, it's just random words like water, rock, hammer, anvil. It's um, there's no sense to it. It's just just random words, like I say. Uh, but yeah, extremely well made. Yeah. I'll take the ring. Go back to the throne. See if there's any yeah. markings on the throne. Okay. Having a search around the throne, like I say, it's, it's dwarven made, uh, so it's, it's beautifully carved. Uh, but uh, but no, there's there's nothing around the throne that, that stands out. Meanwhile, on the phone, uh, Christoph, uh, you're feeling very, very tired all of a sudden. Uh, and the hammer is feeling really, really heavy in your arms. Did you I'm hear a little what he nap, said, I think. I'm a little nap. Did you hear what he said, Christoph? 
Uh, no, what did he say? He said it was a trap. He said the hammer was a trap. Oh, God. You're basically <laughs> cursed to stay in this place forever. Oh, that's just... So you might as well get used to it. Don't fall asleep, manling. Keep moving. Oh. Make a toughness test, please, Christoph. Can you times your toughness by 10 and roll against it? <laughs> really? Really. What's your toughness? Uh, Three. Okay, so uh, uh, 28. I have done it. Okay. You're staying awake, but barely. Um, what, what, what you need is an adrenaline shot and a shitload of coffee, but yeah, you're yes. really, really, really tired. He said that this was the this key. Was all our key. man's doing. Well, <clears throat> yes. You found our man's cursed key warhammer. Yes. What are, what are we going to do with it now then? Look, um, everywhere we've been, it seems that Armand has left a trail of of destruction or yes, misery. Yeah, uh, misery. Why why would we be bringing him back to the to the emperor? Well, because um, he can see the future. Emperor, the really big and public executions of miscreants. I don't think that's what the emperor has in mind. Should be. Are you saying that our emperor is doing it for his own personal gain? No, I just think that he doesn't understand the nature of what this Armand de Gwyn is. Are you all right? No, I'm sleepy. I'm tired. You're making another toughness roll. Yeah, I'm no. gonna look around this hall. Perhaps you should get off of that throne, Christoph. Did you pass, Christoph? No, I no. didn't. No, at that point you fall you do fall to sleep. Okay. So what did you say? So yeah. So you're in this hall, and he's snoring loudly. Um and as you as you're watching, it's almost like there's dust gathering across the warhammer and up his arms and across his shoulder. Um, yeah, it's it's he's really weird to watch. Yeah, <laughs> it's <a> quiet. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's still there. I do apologise. Oh, I stand by what I say. So yeah, it's um yeah, and the hall itself has gone really strangely quiet, almost like, almost like muffled quiet. There's no sound of anything. You, you don't hear the, the chains clanking. Uh, all you can hear is the blood pushing through your ears and your own breath. That's it. It's gone strangely, hauntingly quiet. So we should get him off this throne. Maybe. I... We can have a walk around a bit and wake him up. I, what do you think? I think what we need to do is figure out what kind of lock that hammer fits to. If it's a key, there must be a lock. Your kinsman had said that Armand hadn't returned here in some time. Mm. And we need to find him. And yeah... Or they have weird cultist meetings upstairs in some side hall of this once great place. No, well, we don't know that with him. He's coming back. He's just been disrespecting one of my ancestors. Well, he's entrapped him. Mm. It's a little more serious than disrespect. Yeah. Mm. On the plus side. He's been quiet for longer than I've ever known. <laughs> and it will be easier to guard him if he's stuck here. The but glass, glass half-full kind of guy. <laughs> but on the plus, on, on the minus side, I'm not getting paid to guard him here. No. Mm. So what is it you want to do? He's asleep on the si on the on the sofa. He's asleep on the throne now. Uh, the Warhammer again, as like I say, is covered. He's, he's across his lap. There's a strange layer of dust starting to cover over him. Are we able to uh, lift him the, up? The hall's the gone. Throne? Yes, you are. Yeah, he's a dead weight. Uh, so it's going to take a couple of you to pick him up. Uh, and it's almost as if the hammer has become like lead. So as soon as you pick him up, it literally you you're carrying his weight. He's, 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 I mean, he's not a small lad, but between the two of you, I mean, you've got good strength <laughs> scores, so he's okay to, ha to to carry. It's the hammer that's the weight. And as you're heading down the dais, the hammer gets heavier and heavier and heavier. I've got to carry him. <laughs> just let it go. Cut, cut his arm off. <laughs> I've got a plan, so I'm going to lay him down on the on the steps, put the hammer above his head. You yep. take his left leg, I take his right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
we cannot carry him like this. Of course not. We're going to drag him. We need to drag him. He's a when noble. the hammer we gets to the bottom step, it literally <laughs> glues yeah. itself into place like Thor's hammer. And <laughs> his hands are attached to it. <laughs> so it basically, no matter how much you pull, you hear a pop as a socket comes out. No, I'm joking. No matter how much you pull, he's, he's not budging. He's not moving from here. This is like the visit to that tavern with all the wench, with all the comely wenches in all over again. You couldn't, couldn't drag him out of that so, either. <laughs> all, all you've got is this hammer, and you've got the uh, the king, what well, the, the dwarf lord's ring. I, the royal pain in the ass, even when he's unconscious. Strike him in the face and say, "Kristoff, uh, wake up, wake up, yeah, man." Assets or any anything on the hammer where the ring could fit onto or flick into. On the very head. There's like a indentation and like the, the ring itself, the ruby's been carved in the shape of a three-sided pyramid, so it's a D4 basically. And there's an indentation in the very top of the hammer uh, of that same sort of shape. It couldn't be that simple, surely. <laughs> a key for a key? <laughs> I'll place it One in. One way to find out. <laughs> this is where this I'll, gets worse. <laughs> I'll, I'll fit it in and see if it turns. Put it in, it doesn't turn. But the actual ring itself starts to warm up and the, the runes on the hammer start to glow from across the head all the way down the handle. Um, silver all the way down, almost like threads of marble. So it's, uh, it's actually quite pretty. And then it gets brighter and brighter. And that's where we'll leave it. <laughs> that's a good place to leave it. Awesome. Yeah.